A girl sends a message saying she's going to break up and a protagonist starts crying. He's in disbelief, wondering if it was a joke. He thinks she's not serious because he had plans for their future relationship and was even thinking about marriage. However, he gets blocked and agonizes in his chair. A friend was going to call him to play but ends up seeing the protagonist pass out. The friend tries to help, but he storms out, slamming the door. His friends are outraged because he cannot maintain a relationship. Chen Wan is a famous dog licker. He just follows girls around, spending money on them, and gets nowhere. He is outraged that after three years, he got nowhere with Chu Tong. The scene shifts to them talking and a group of people watch them. The protagonist begs for forgiveness and gives her a piglet plush toy, her favorite animal. People around them gossip that he had four jobs to support her. Chu Tong explains that everything is fine, but after some time thinking, she realized she wanted to get back with her ex. The protagonist knows her ex and calls him a jerk. He tells her to her face that her ex cheated on her and left her pregnant. Suddenly, a car appears and a guy calls her to get in. Chu Tong's ex does not like them talking and drives her off while she says that this way is better. At the convenience store, the protagonist is devastated. As a bootlicker, he thinks he will never have a relationship. But a system appears showing his information named Chen Yuan, with 230 Chinese coins and personal wealth and one strength point. However, it also shows another piece of information saying he has 90 billion Chinese coins to be a dog licker. He wonders what is happening. A girl approaches him, asking if something is wrong with him because he keeps staring at her chest. The protagonist looks at her and starts analyzing her stats. The system shows her name is Hu Liel. She is 21 years old, 165 centimeters tall, weighs 49 kilograms, and is almost an 8 in appearance. Her favorability towards the protagonist is minus 50. The system informs him that if a chosen woman reaches 95 favorability points, she can become his bootlicker. The protagonist is confused, wondering if he has to use the 90 billion given by the system on women. The system informs him that the 90 billion coins can be spent and that they have been credited to his card. It also states that they only work on women, and when he reaches 95 favorability points, he earns a tenth of the spent value back along with some other rewards. Now convinced, the protagonist invites Ikshu Lil to eat, saying he will pay for everything. The system informs him that everything is set and he can spend on her. When he reaches 95 favorability points with a girl, he also gets 5 points as a reward, which can be used to enhance his abilities. The girl looks at him and asks if he is trying to show off his wealth. Chu Liel is unsure if he is trying to flirt with her and if he can succeed. The protagonist keeps staring at Su Liel and remembers that she is very powerful since she made a guy spend more than 30,000 with just 3 words. He responds to her provocation saying that if she does not test him, she will not find out. She then accepts and tells him to buy snacks for everyone in the class. Chu Liel looks down on him thinking he dresses like a beggar and yet wants to flirt with her so she will have to teach him a lesson. But the protagonist spends 50,000 without worry. A group of people who were speaking ill of him realize he is rich but does not dress like it. The protagonist tells her to relax, saying that amount is nothing to him. Not being a fool, he asks her at him. Chu Liel is confused, wondering if he is a second generation rich kid, implying he inherited everything and is a multimillionaire. She says she can add him but he must go to a special place first. Let's see how I will deal with you. Kirlil thinks, in front of a Gucci store. She says she is not a materialistic person, she just wants to be sure of his sincerity and actions. Given his clothing, the protagonist thinks he will be thrown out. But Chen Yuan tells Xu Liel is fine and she can buy whatever she wants. Entering the store, the protagonist sees his ex is accompanied. She and Junkai are talking about a bag she is trying on. Chu Tong notices the protagonist is not alone. Xu Liel asks the protagonist if that is his ex-girlfriend saying it is not a good time for them to be there. He says there is no bad time, they arrived at the perfect moment. Do you still have that spring collection bag? Chu Liel asks. A store clerk responds they only have one unit left, but Chu Tong is trying it on. The protagonist's ex is confused and says she will show the difference between a loser and a Junkai. Chu Tong tells Junkai that her birthday is coming up. He is confused remembering that her birthday was recently. But she explains that the previous birthday was based on the lunar calendar and asks if he knows people also have birthdays based on the solar calendar. Don't you know that I don't like materialistic girls? You're not with me for money, right? Junkai responds. Chu Tong is speechless. After this conversation, Lil takes Chu Tong's bag, saying she will buy it since it seems Chu Tong doesn't have money. Using the protagonist's money, he gains 20 favorability points with Chu Lil. Swiping the card, he gains another 20, and as she smells the bag, he gains another 20. He is excited thinking about how money improves things and that the bag made him gain 60 points. At this rate, he will quickly reach the top of her favorability. The problem is that if he reaches 95 favorability with her, Without spending much, only buying those cheap bags, he won't get much money back. The store attendants seem confused, saying that some guys appear rich, but don't like to spend on their girlfriends, while the poorly dressed protagonist is giving Su Lil the best. Chu Tong is left humiliated on the floor while Su Lil stands there, saying that a bag is like a boyfriend, it's good to hold on tightly. 
She looks at the protagonist, thinking she can't lose him, and gives him some compliments. Chu Tong, with tears in her eyes, bumps into him, saying he's gone too far. Too far? Haha, <laughs> Chu Tong, you still have a lot to suffer. The protagonist says. But with her aggressive move, the protagonist activated the system's second relationship. It begins to show her information. Name is Chu Tong. 21 years old, 163 centimeters tall, weighing 49 kilograms. She has a slightly higher rating than Xiao Liu and has minus 10 favorability, with the same goal of 95 favorability. Are you relieved? Did I do a good job, didn't I? Where are we going now? Xiao Liu says. The protagonist says the night is just starting and he has plenty of money, asking if she is satisfied with just one bag. And she starts grabbing everything she can, ending up full of bags. The protagonist gives the card. The store attendants say they will deliver to the address after the purchase is finalized. Ken Yuan keeps gaining favorability with Xiu Liu, another 5 points. Swipes the card, another 5. Swipes the card, another 5. Xiu Liu gets tired of buying clothes and doesn't even know where she will put all of it. Not enough space. Doesn't matter. I'll buy you a house, says the protagonist. But this made him lose some favorability. Xiu Liu says they should take it easy since they have spent a lot. The protagonist understands he scared her and that it's not normal for someone to buy a house for another person so quickly, even for a multimillionaire. Su Liu, a junior at the Fine Arts College, 21 years old, 49 kilograms, and her favorite color is black, the protagonist says, implying he knows her well. He asks the store attendant if they have a card he can give to Xu Liu. She says they do. Then the protagonist asks to put 500,000 credits on the card for Xu Liu to spend whenever she wants. Chen Yuan gives the card as an apology for the misunderstanding. She blushes and feels happy. He whispers in her ear that if she can't resist, she should just give in to him. Oh, you bad boy, you're a bad boy, my god, Xu Liu says, and he gains another 30 favorability points. The store attendants go crazy over how attentive and caring he is with her. The protagonist says that having money makes it much easier to flirt with people. Xu Liu asks him if, even though he buys a lot for her, he doesn't buy clothes for himself. The protagonist says he doesn't have much money. Xu Liu, wanting to impress the protagonist, takes him to buy some clothes. She starts spending the 50000 her father sent, paying for a haircut, some clothes, and sneakers. Xu Liu is impressed seeing the protagonist with a new haircut and sneakers, and he gains another 5 favorability points. Another 5. Another 5. The protagonist asks if he did something wrong since he never spent money on himself before. She puts her hand on Chen Yuan's chin and says there's nothing wrong with him. She just thinks now they make a good couple. She thanks him, saying it was a very special day. Now Xu Liu has 68 favorability points. Back at the dormitory, his friends ask what he did all day and why he is all dressed up. Ken Yuan says he was on a date with Xiao Lela. His friends give some advice, reminding him that not long ago he was suffering over his ex, and now he is with Xiao Lela. They suggest he stay away from her or he will end up very poor. The protagonist thanks them for the advice. Then he receives a notification from Chu Tong saying that if he hates her, it's best they delete each other's numbers. Chen Yuan looks at the phone, thinking about how he will increase favorability with her since she wants him to delete her number, but he wants to earn money with her. Of course not, how could that be possible? You will always have a special place in my heart, the protagonist says, sending the message. She responds saying she is not with that guy because she wants to be, but because her mother is sick and needs 50,000 for medical procedures. Xu Tong is impressed, realizing she was only playing with him, and receives a notification of 50,000 that the protagonist sent. Xu Tong's friend asks who sent that money. She responds that it was her ex who sent it. Wait, Chen Yuan, didn't you dump him today? That loser is this rich. Xu Tong starts wondering if she made a mistake by leaving him. And even after he sent 50,000 to Xu Tong, he only gained 5 favorability points. She asks Chen Yuan several questions, such as what he meant by sending the money, where he got all that money, why Su Lilo was with him, why he didn't buy a bag for her, and if he might be a second generation rich kid. The protagonist silences her after she sends 15 messages in a row and wonders if there is a more fun way to spend money on women. He finds a girl doing a live stream, but there are only a few minutes left until she closes. She gets frustrated and asks if anyone's going to send gifts or if she should end the live stream. The protagonist sees that he can send up to a million and thinks it's much better than buying bags. He starts a frenzy of sending multiple gifts. The girl thanks him for sending a rocket, but then 100 rockets appear on the girl's screen. The people in the live chat get angry, wondering who sent all the gifts. Ken Yuan realizes that someone with a lot of money gets a lot of attention and sends 900 more rockets, causing her phone to crash. At the company where the girl does her live streams, an employee informs the boss that something incredible happened. A guy spent 10 million on Xiaomi's live stream. The staff goes wild, unsure if the protagonist is laundering money through the site or if he is affiliated with the company. All the other girls doing live streams see the protagonist's nickname and are amazed that he spent 10 million on Xiaomi's live stream and try to send him messages in his DM. Ken Yuan just watches the messages come in. The girl who received the gifts wonders if it's all real, 
but then a guy with a sign comes over saying he needs to get the protagonist's contact information and will get a raise for it. The girl sends him a message thanking him for the gifts. She asks if he is still in the live chat since she is about to close. But Chen Yuan had gone to sleep after spending money all day. The next morning, his friends are looking at news online about a guy who spent 10 million on a girl's live stream. And the guys are discussing what they would do if they had that kind of money. The protagonist realizes he spent all that money and didn't create any kind of relationship with her. So he opens TikTok and sees a bunch of girls sending him messages. One girl says she is 28 years old and divorced, asking if he wants to meet her. She is frustrated since the protagonist doesn't respond to her messages, inviting him to her studio and saying she's waiting for him. He isn't very excited about these messages since he doesn't gain any favorability. His friends are still discussing the amount of money and getting ready to go out. The protagonist asks his friends where they are going without him and they respond that they are going to see the goddess Zhao Yuki and are going early because they want to see her up close. His friends ask if he had forgotten because normally he runs ahead just to be there from the moment she arrives until she leaves. A system shows her information, her name is Zhao Yuki, she is the beauty of Hunan campus, the vice president of the student council and the dream of all the students. She is level 10 in piano, an athlete, a professional in ballet and fencing. Her incredible talents make it extremely difficult for any guy to get close to her, an unattainable woman for all the boys in college. In the last three years, no one has been able to get close to her. The protagonist feels challenged since she is the most difficult girl, meaning he will have to spend more money. Xu Tong is nearby talking to her friend saying that Chen Yuan only learned how to dress up after they broke up and says she is afraid he and Jung Kai will fight because of her. Her favorability is only going up. Gains another 10, gains another 10. The protagonist is annoyed saying that favorability is only going up because he dressed up, but it's all nonsense. His real focus is Zhao Yuki. One of the guys nearby is talking about wanting to see how his boss will win over the goddess Zhao Yuki, and he says she will fall in love with him. He approaches her, asking for her contact information when another guy comes up asking what he is doing. He doesn't care about what that guy is saying and continues talking to her, insisting that she adds him, saying he wants to get to know her better and be friends with her. The angry guy demands to know if it's looking for trouble and what he plans to do with Yuki. Taken aback claims it's a misunderstanding and that he just wanted to join the student union because she is the vice president and he wanted some advice. The angry guy scolds him, saying that's not a good enough excuse to hit on her, calling him a pervert. But the protagonist, undeterred, asks if she can add him on Snapchat. She looks puzzled, wondering why so much is happening. The protagonist remains confident that she will add him. The president says he is bold and courageous for putting himself out there for everyone to mock. The other guy admits the protagonist is even more handsome than the last one, and asks if he wants to join the student union too. The protagonist replies no, he doesn't care about the student union. The guy is confused why he wants UP Snap. Ken Yuan says he just wants to pursue her. Students from another class watch, noting another guy trying to talk to her, but at least the protagonist is bold. Zhao Yuki decides to give him her contact information. Xu Bang's friend asks what's going on between them. I like beautiful women, why should I hide that? Sometimes the simplest approach is the most effective. What woman doesn't like being pursued, says the protagonist. It shows that he has formed a bootlicker relationship with her, but with zero favorability. He is happy but confused since she gave her contact to someone with zero favorability. Outside the class, his friends say he nailed it by getting Yuki's contact since he used to seem like a bootlicker and now looks confident. One of the protagonist's friends jokes that if he gets close to the president, he will have to introduce them to her friends. The protagonist doubts he will manage to talk to her, saying they are exaggerating since she is the most beautiful girl on campus. A guy behind him yells, calling him a loser but admitting he has good sense, revealing himself as the one who tried to hit on her and got rejected. Ken Yuan says he is the most professional of all and that the protagonist has much to learn from him. The guy starts mocking him, saying he is proud for nothing since he only got her number and asks if Chen Yuan knows him. But the protagonist just laughs in his face. Then Su Lil appears, asking why Chen Yuan took so long and saying she has been waiting for him for a long time. Everyone is shocked that Su Lil, known for rejecting all kinds of guys, was waiting for this guy. The protagonist invites Ik Su Lil to eat as an apology for making her wait. Su Lil asks if she looks pretty in the clothes he bought her. Meanwhile, Chu Tong, very angry, listens nearby. The protagonist replies that no girl looks pretty just because of clothes. The couple walks off, everyone watching them. The rejected guy says he doesn't understand he was just one step behind the protagonist. But he stops complaining when he sees Chu Tong nearby, asking who that girl was. Chu Lil hands him a drawing she made of him, saying she stayed up all night drawing and if he throws it away, she will never forgive him. The protagonist says it's the first time since he was born that he's received a gift from a girl and she asks if he liked it. He stares at her and asks if all this is just a game to keep him. Xu Liel wonders if he liked the drawing as he doesn't seem very happy. He asks if she will give him better gifts in the future than just drawings. She gets angry and asks for the drawing back. He says he won't return it and will keep it as a family heirloom. The protagonist tells her he likes her more as a person than any gifts she could give. She is impressed by how good he is at flirting. 
another five favorability points. The protagonist thinks she wants him to become her pet, but he plans to use her to make more money. A guy interrupts asking if Xu Lil isn't going to do her nails, who the protagonist is, and he is rich. The protagonist thinks this guy is another of Xu Lil's bootlickers, noting that this happens often. Xu Lil says she doesn't know who he is and that he doesn't control her. The protagonist steps forward, introduces himself, and asks the guy's name and how long he has been following Su Lil. The guy responds that his name is Yang Yu. He's from the arts department and has been following her for six months. The protagonist tells him that it's nonsense and shares his own story about being replaced by a girl he followed for three years, working four jobs, eating just bread every day, only to be replaced by a guy with a Mercedes Benz. Yang Yu doesn't understand why he is sharing this story. The protagonist tries to motivate him, saying that people who turn their backs on you become motivation for personal development and asks why a real man can't have a wife. He tells Yang Yu to go back to his dormitory and make her regret her decision. Yang Yu is so inspired that he starts crying. He even Su Liu wonders what is happening and why Yang Yu is crying. She awkwardly says that he is just a friend. The protagonist says he doesn't care about her past and points out that she doesn't respect him or herself. He tears up the drawing and tells her she can use the card he gave her, but he doesn't want to see her until she sorts out her relationships. The protagonist wants to see how she will handle this situation, as it's the first time this has happened. Su Liu regrets her actions, realizing the protagonist is the first person who truly liked her. And another five favorability points. Ken Yuan reflects on how he has matured, resolved things with Xu Liu, and now it's time to move on. He goes to talk to Zhao Yuki and sees that she is live streaming. She seems the most innocent so far, not having done anything horrible to be hated for. She is doing her live, introducing herself as Kiki, training piano, doing live streams for two days, and asking people to take care of her. The protagonist thinks she is cute and wonders if the president is the type of girl who is cold outside but warm inside. Arrogantly, he notices that she has few views and wonders if that's all she gets. At this moment, Xiaomi sends a message asking where he is. He asks who she is. She thinks he has forgotten about her and says he sent many gifts in her live stream and now doesn't remember her. He says he was just joking and asks if she is free to meet up. She says she can't if she has a busy schedule. He just ignores her. She asks him not to be angry, promising a special live stream. The protagonist, annoyed, complains that she still wants him to send gifts. He doesn't have a bootlicker system with her and has already spent over 10 million. Tired of the situation, he decides to give that money to Zhao. A duel appears on the live stream, a one-on-one -on -one between streamers. One will compete against the other, and whoever receives more donations wins. They have to compete to get money. The protagonist is happy about the duel involving the president and asks who her opponent is. The crazy girl laughs at the situation, confident she will win against a novice. The protagonist says he doesn't know who will win and the duel begins. Hiromi has 10,000 points while Yuki is poor with 206. She is giving her best, using all her talent, charisma, genius, and wit, creating a masterpiece. Xiaomi taunts Zhao, saying it's better for her to give up since she has the support of a very rich guy, Chen Yuan. The chat goes wild over this duel. It seems I use all my skills to make money, and surely boss Smokey will be impressed and donate to me, Xiaomi thinks. But then a rock appears on the screen and she thinks Yuan has arrived. She prepares to thank the protagonist, but then she sees that all the rockets went to Yuki's live stream. Yuki's points jump to 152,000. A notification pops up saying Lonely Smoke donated a thousand rockets to Kiki. The president is in shock and Xiaomi is outraged that the rockets weren't for her. A guy with a sign appears, demanding an explanation for why she didn't receive the rockets. Shaking Xiaomi apologizes to the audience, saying she has to do something and ends the live. The protagonist comments that she can't handle it when he sends gifts to others and wanted to see her reaction. He hopes the president won't disappoint considering the significant amount he spent. The people at the company go crazy thinking the ghost has done it again, imagining that the protagonist must be the son of some prince to pull off such a stunt. My god, the smoke donated another 10 million to a girl who plays the piano. Does he like music? Xiao Lei, get my triangle now, says a streamer. Kiki and her friend talk with her friend suggesting that the president might become an internet celebrity, impressed by the idea. Yuki responds that pleasing men online doesn't seem like a long-term solution. She emphasizes that the most important thing for a woman is to have a financially and personally independent career. Kiki's friend asks if she knows the guy, but she has no idea who it was. Kiki tells her friend she wants to send a thank you message for the gifts. Her friend is indignant, reminding her that she said she didn't want to get involved with anyone. Then she exclaims, saying maybe she knows the guy, thinking he must be the son of someone very wealthy. She speculates that he must be extremely talented and raised in an extremely rich family, but prefers to live an ordinary life, thus finding a common girl and deciding to like her as a common man. She explains to her friend, saying it must be that. Her friend dismisses it, saying she's been watching too many dramas. Kiki imagines how difficult his life must be, pretending to be an ordinary guy. Her friend tells her to go to sleep, saying it's late, but Kiki really wants to thank Chen. The protagonist looks at his phone and sees a message from a girl asking if he's free to eat, 
and he says he wants to eat his favorite dish, crayfish. She agrees and says she'll meet him at the school gate in the afternoon. She didn't ask where I got the money for the gifts, just invited me to dinner. I want to see what she's up to, he thinks, staring at his phone. The next morning, the protagonist arrives at school on his scooter. A guy standing by a Mercedes asks if he's waiting for someone. The protagonist asks if he is waiting for someone, too. The guy says he's waiting for his girlfriend. Then the pianist arrives, and the guy tells the protagonist not to look too much, because to win over someone like her, you need to work hard and have a lot of money, or he will take all the beautiful girls. Kiki sees the protagonist and imagines him as a hero on a motorcycle. She runs towards him. The guy thinks, ha, you think you can get into my car? But then she goes to the protagonist's scooter, and the guy is stunned. He wonders what's the point of having so much money. They ride off on the scooter, and she imagines herself as his fiancé. They arrive at the restaurant. They order some spicy crayfish. The dish arrives, and they think it must be wonderful. The protagonist romantically arranges the table for her. She thinks he hasn't forgotten how to be a gentleman even with the opportunity to go to expensive restaurants, giving off a noble family vibe and being disciplined. The protagonist is eating the small crayfish, and she comments that it must be the smallest crayfish she has eaten. Kiki is impressed that Chen Yuan is eating with her, thinking he wants to live a peaceful life without much worry, and says he is as gentle as a flower. The protagonist wonders why he suddenly gained another 10 favorability points. Then Kiki offers to feed him, saying she peeled the crayfish for him. Just as he is about to eat, someone arrives. It's Shu Tang again, wondering if she saw Kiki feeding Chen Yu on the crayfish. She turns to her boyfriend and says the place is crowded and suggests they find a better spot. But the guy asks if the restaurant is crowded or full of familiar faces, saying he doesn't mind eating in a crowded place. Shu Tang's boyfriend walks up to the protagonist's table and throws $500 at him, saying it's for him to get up so they can sit there. What the hell does he think? Does he think this is cool? The protagonist wonders. The guy throws more money, telling him to leave quickly and asking if he wants more. Kiki, holding her bag in anger, looks furious. The protagonist sees Kiki is upset, thinking it's because of the guy. She is stressed, wondering where this guy came from to ruin their perfect date. The guy pulls out more Monopoly money, saying he has much more to make him leave. A staff member offers to take the money and find them a table. This only angers Chu Dong's boyfriend more, saying he wants to eat at that table. Then someone hits him with a handbag. A previously unknown woman pretends it was an accident. Angry, Chen is confused about what's happening. The blonde guy seems to know the woman and calls her by name, Chakim. He asks what she's doing there. She angrily says that if she wasn't there, she wouldn't have caught him cheating, already cursing him. The guy says she's misunderstanding and that he can't cheat on her since she's everything to him. Ken's admirers are just watching. Pulls the blonde's hair, blaming her for using her body to seduce him. The girl cries, saying he invited her and lied about being single. The guy says she's making up stories and slaps her face. She collapses on the floor, devastated. He moves to slap her head, but his hand is stopped. Hitting a woman, huh? You really enjoy embarrassing yourself, don't you? The protagonist says, and Lonely Smoke gains another 20 favorability points. Kutong says the protagonist really loves her. The protagonist keeps gaining favorability, another 20, another 20 favorability points with Chu Tong. The second target of the bootlicker system reached over 95 points. The system congratulates Chen Yuan, saying he successfully reversed the bootlicker situation. It shows that Chen Yuan spent 50,000 on the second target and informs him that he will receive 5,000 in return. Chu Tong has been converted into the protagonist's bootlicker and he gains 20 strength points. Chen Yuan allocates 10 points to strength and 10 points to fitness. He flexes his arm and the blonde guy demands that Chen let go of his arm and grabs a bottle, threatening to kill him. Chen stares and says the guy is annoying, then punches the bottle and the guy, sending him flying. The guy falls to the ground, looking defeated, and Chen says that depending on a woman is not shameful, but hitting a woman while doing so makes one despicable. The blonde is biting his lips, clutching a balloon popper. The girl with Chen Yuan is nervous, urging him to end it quickly. Chu Tang's boyfriend charges at the protagonist. But thanks to his new points, Chen dodges quickly, causing the blonde guy to hit his elbow and collapse to the ground. Everyone eating in the food court is nervous. The blonde guy is on the ground, foaming at the mouth. Chen walks away with his hand in his pocket, the young girl beside him. Chu Tong, now a bootlicker, watches and clings to Chen's leg, begging for forgiveness and a second chance. Cold and calculating, Chen reminds her of the guy who ran over 10 kilometers with her on his back at 3 a.m. to take her to the hospital. The one who saved money for half a year to buy her phone, only for her to ignore it because it wasn't the latest model and the one who, despite knowing all her unnecessary vanity, always thought of her as a good person. He tells her that all those guys are dead. Outside, talking with the president, he apologizes for everything that happened. She says calling her president is too formal and that he can call her Kiki. She says it didn't bother her and that she saw a different side of someone. She thinks Chen Yuan is more intriguing the more she gets to know him, imagining that he will bring countless surprises to her. Arriving home, Xu Tong is crying, soaked from the rain. Her friend asks why she didn't use an umbrella. Chu Tong is too nervous to speak coherently. 
Her friend then asks if it was the protagonist, saying she heard he gave 10 million to Zhao in her live stream. She says Chen Yuan may not look like it, but he is very rich. What? More than 10 million? Where? Did you hear this? Is it true? Xu Tong asks. Yes, Zhao's classmates spread the news to everyone, her friend replies. She can't believe what her friend is saying. She screams Chen Yuan's name for everyone to hear. In the room, the protagonist's friends are playing Mobile League of Legends. They ask how he's so good winning 18 matches in a row. The protagonist hadn't imagined that adding 20 attribute points would make him so good at online games. A guy with a cool hairstyle suggests that with this talent, he could become a streamer, earning millions and getting some hype. He is amazed at the power the attribute points have given him. Looking at himself, he wonders who will benefit from his body next. At the door, his friends shout for him to come out. His phone is ringing. Chen Yuan wonders what tactics she will use to manipulate him now. The protagonist answers the phone, but he is cold. Hello, Miss Gexu Liel. Is there something you need to inform me about? The protagonist answers. She starts crying, saying she doesn't know what to do. It shows her in an abandoned room full of Chen Yuan's purchases. She asks to borrow 500,000 from him. Zhu Liel says her family was once prosperous, but now they are stuck in debt, unable to pay off the interest, making no progress, and just needing to clear the debts. The protagonist only asks two things what she wants and to send the account details. She is shocked, thinking he wouldn't send the money. She quickly sends the account information. The protagonist sends 5 million. She says he mistakenly deposited 5 million. He says he must have pressed an extra zero and that she can keep the money. She screams in gratitude. And then it keeps coming more, 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 more. Her favorability keeps increasing. Shu Liel creams with happiness. I mean cry. Shu Liel thanks the protagonist and promises to pay him back when she can. Her favorability continues to rise, now reaching 94. The protagonist sees her favorability at 94 points, complains about not being able to win her over quickly, and considers confessing, but quickly dismisses the thought as those who reveal their true feelings lose. The next day, the protagonist is hanging out with his friends when someone calls his name from behind. When he turns around, it's Chu Tong, holding some pastries and asking if he wants to eat them in the classroom. The protagonist's friend is shocked, wondering why she's bringing breakfast for Chen Yuan. But then, Yuan hears someone else calling him and sees it's Liu who also brought breakfast, saying he must be tired of eating cafeteria food. They face off in a bootlicker showdown. However, once again, someone else calls Chen Yuan. His friends are outraged that he has yet another girl. The protagonist wonders who it is this time. It's the president, who brought Raymond for them to eat. The three girls glare at each other. The president is the second most beautiful girl on campus with a commanding aura. The protagonist receives the Raymond and asks how she knew he liked Raymond with meat. She says it was easy to guess, since they had a date. Ken Yuan isn't even trying to seduce anymore, he just wants to see who can seduce him better. The protagonist says that President Zhao easily wins since she understands his tastes. Setting a subtle jab to the other bootlickers, Kiki says she wouldn't deliver breakfast without knowing his preferences, and that if someone doesn't pay attention to such details, he doesn't like them. After saying this, it felt like she had delivered a spinning punch to the other two, then she gives him a gift to show her gratitude. The protagonist is impressed, it's the new iPhone. All of his friends are stunned to see the latest generation phone. One of the protagonist's friends says that seeing the girls giving gifts to Chen Yuan is worse than losing his own father. The girls say she was very generous to give a 10,000 item. The protagonist tells Kiki that she didn't need to. She replies that he spent much more on her and it's the thought that counts since she doesn't have much money. In the next scene, Xu Tong is desolate, wondering how hard it is to win back Chen Yuan. A few days later, there are now many competitors. Xu Liu calls Xu Tong to talk in a private place, but Xu Tong is very angry, blaming her for everything that is happening. Xu Liel approaches and suggests they form an alliance to face Yuki. In the next chapter, the protagonist is there with his iPhone praising Yuki for the gift. She looks back, thinking he said something, but Chen Yuan says it was nothing. The protagonist has 40 favorability points with the warrior. He thinks that if it weren't for those ridiculous 40 favorability points, she would have fallen for him by now. He's impressed with her actions, feeling like she's making him a different person. He's far from completing the favorability points, but she acts as if he already has. His phone rings, and it's Xiaomi. The little streamer from TikTok sends him a message, saying that last time they couldn't meet but she was joking and they can meet, though she fears meeting people from her live stream. The protagonist is confused, wondering if that is some kind of excuse. He says she should at least send some photos because he is not easy to win over. He receives a message from someone named Dragon King, inviting him to join a legendary group of otakus who are trashy and donate money. Ken Yuan joins the group, now called Solitary Cigarette. Someone is surprised that the Dragon King invited the protagonist saying he is the biggest donor they have ever seen. The protagonist sends a message introducing himself in the group and asks them to take care of him. Someone says he has the appearance of a rich person and must have some kind of talent. Another person says they have a business and asks if he wants to participate. Chen Yuan, these rich kids want to test me. Fine, I'll play with you, he thinks. Yes, sure. I can help you. Let's talk. Message me privately, the protagonist says. 
Hey, Big Cigarette, I have an insane villa for sale. Are you interested? Another person asks. The protagonist asks where the villa is and the person sends the address. The protagonist says the villa is in the Anku district and a house there is worth a million. He plans to buy an apartment and will go check it out in the coming days. Inside the mansion, a bald guy asks if the protagonist is really considering buying it and if Chen Yuan really has money since he thinks he doesn't exist. The protagonist receives the address and wonders how much favorability he would gain if he gives this villa to her. The next day, arriving at the villa with the president by his side, she asks why he brought her to the villa so suddenly. Hey, you must be Brother Lu's cigarette, right? Says the guard with the illustrated head. The protagonist recognizes the face and gives him a hug. The guy thinks Chen doesn't look very wealthy, but having the president with him gives him some credibility. He wonders if Chen is from a secret rich family and thinks this will be a tough negotiation. He introduces himself as Hong Yuan Chiao and says he has some small businesses but needs to sell the villa due to financial problems. The bald man invites them in. The host describes the house, saying it has over 500 square meters, the land is over 2,000 square meters, the decoration was done by designers, and the furniture is exclusive and made in Italy. He tells them to enjoy the view of the river and the city and says if he didn't have money, he would want to be buried there. Keiki realizes he is serious about buying the place, even though it's expensive. Chen Yuan takes a quick look, saying he thought the house would be more beautiful, and asks how much it costs to live there. The bald man says he needs the money and mentions that many people are interested in the house, making it hard to negotiate. He says he wanted to sell it for about 50 million but asks if 60 million is a fair price. Ken Yuan lets out a hmm. The man wonders if the price is too high for him and thinks it's hard to fool the son of a noble. The protagonist says he didn't expect it to be so cheap. Everyone in the room is impressed by the protagonist's response. The bald man thinks he should have asked for more, like 70 or 80 million. The protagonist asks Kiki if they should buy the house. Kiki is surprised but says she doesn't care if he buys it or not. He gets close to her and says he's buying this house for her. The bald man is shocked, never imagining he would buy the house for the president. Kiki stands there like a statue, stunned, saying 60 million is too much. She imagines Chen Yuan locking her in the basement, tying her up. She apologizes, saying she can't accept such a gift. The protagonist takes her hand, asking her to listen to him. He explains that there's a restriction on the number of properties he can own and he has several houses. He was thinking of transferring this one to her name. That way, she will have her own house. She imagines doing crazy things with him. The protagonist whispers, asking if she thinks relationships are important, saying everything he has is also hers. Getting another 10 favorability points, another 10, another 10. He reaches 90, just 5 more to go. The protagonist thinks he deserves an Oscar, saying his acting skills are improving. The blonde girl nudges the bald man, asking when this will happen to them. The Mosquito Airport guy says he doesn't have money for such gifts. Meanwhile, Chen Yuan swipes his card. He says he will transfer the money, and after the paperwork is complete, they'll settle the rest. The man tells the protagonist not to worry and that everything will be sorted out in the coming days. The protagonist's plan is going as expected. The president's favorability reaches 90. Chen Yuan thinks that once he completes the favorability, the 70 million he invested will return as more than 700,000. She looks at the protagonist and thinks, considering everything that happened, he's about to say something that will embarrass her. She imagines their perfect wedding, wondering if it will be in Milan or the Maldives. She wonders what the ring will look like already thinking about the baby's name and worries if he will forget her when he gets old. But before imagining more, they arrive at their destination. She steps out of the car and asks if Chen Yuan isn't coming out. He says no. A friend invited him to play a game of LOL and waves goodbye. She waves back sadly. She feels indignant, expecting more than just a goodbye. Chen Yuan arrives at the internet cafe greeting his friends. They complain he took too long, saying they started a match without him. His friends hurry him to register and play with them as they are losing. The protagonist notices Xu Liu is there and is impressed. She explains that her father owns several internet cafes and this one was recently opened. She is there to attract more customers. She thanks him, saying her family's debts are finally paid off. Xu Liu tells him to stay where he is because she will get him a drink and a card with unlimited credit to play at the internet cafe. Ken Yuan says it's unnecessary, but something explodes behind him. Two guys appear, one looks like a movie character. He asks Kaxu Liel if she is Lao Xu's daughter and when her father will pay the debt. Xu Liel, looking disheveled, says her father paid the 5 million debt and asks what they want. The guy says 5 million was just the beginning, and there are still 15 million in interest. She says it's a scam and threatens to call the police. The guy grabs Xu Liel by the wrist, telling her to be quiet and that if she doesn't want to pay the 15 million, they will take her. He says that after one or two years, she would pay off the debt working at his nightclub. The protagonist pulls her arm away, telling the guy to stop if he wants to leave alive. Xu Liu goes crazy. The thug says the protagonist doesn't know what he's getting into and orders his men to kill him. Then chaos ensues with some guys wielding cake cutters and others using their bare hands. The protagonist lands a sneaker kick on the thug's chin. His friends are impressed, saying it looks like a cyclone kick. 
The scene changes to the thugs running away to avoid getting beaten. The casino representative says if they see them on the street, there will be no more talking. With 95 favorability, Chaju Liel throws herself into the protagonist's arms. The system congratulates him for getting another person to 95 favorability points and informs him that he spent 5.3 million, so he will earn 530,000. A notification appears. Su Liel has successfully been transformed into your loyal bootlicker. Ken Yuan is hugging her, but Chu Tong is watching in the background. However, he is only concerned about where to allocate the attribute points he received. The chest-only trainer arrives, stressed, calling Su Liel a traitor for wanting to form an alliance and now humming the protagonist. The protagonist watches but grows tired of just watching and asks the system to allocate all points to strength and agility. Everyone wonders where he went, but he simply disappeared. Ken Yuan is calmly walking around the college campus, saying he has already gained points from Chu Tong and Tek Su Liel, and that only President Zhao is important. Since there is only one president, the protagonist says he needs more girls. Someone approaches, tapping him on the back, asking if he can move aside as the track team needs that area and it would be good if he didn't stay there. Ken Yuan says she is bold but sincere. The protagonist asks for her contact information but someone else said she is already in a relationship and advises him to leave if he doesn't want trouble. Ken Yuan stares, wondering if he has seen that guy before. He has a flashback and remembers that this thug was beating him up and tells him to look at himself before criticizing others and asks why he was chasing after Xiao Yu. Remembering everything, he says it's easy to find old enemies. The protagonist activates the system on the guy's girlfriend. The system shows her information, stating her name is He Zhaying. She is 19 years old, 1.69 meters tall, weighs 50 kilograms, and has an appearance rating of 8.2. Her current favorability is minus 5. Considering the difficulty, the system will grant more attribute enhancement points. Ken Yuan celebrates, saying he can get 22 points. The jealous guy is in line for the race. People wonder who that guy is in the last lane, saying they have never seen him run. The race starts and the guy runs, saying it's too easy, and he must be racing ants. But he doesn't realize the protagonist is passing him at flash speed, leaving only smoke. Ken Yuan asks Lian to watch as the protagonist will win in the sport he trained for his whole life. The guy, almost exploding with rage, asks if Chen Yuan is underestimating him. He doesn't realize, but the protagonist laps him entirely, wondering how this is possible. The protagonist mocks the guy, saying he trained for a decade only to lose to a week's worth of favorability points. The crowd goes wild, everyone impressed that in 15 seconds, he's on his fifth lap. Ken Yu won't arise happily at the finish line. The most loyal girl in all of China is impressed that Liang lost. The announcer says something incredible is happening before their eyes a new champion who will break any existing records. A muscular professor approaches the protagonist, saying Chen Yuan has extraordinary abilities and asks if he wants to join the track team, promising that with a little more training he can reach the national championship. The humiliated guy asks if the spot wasn't already his. The protagonist mocks Liang, asking if the spot was his, saying it isn't anymore. The last romantic girl in China imagines that the protagonist is a professional runner. With that, she gains five favorability points. The loser approaches and asks if she was thinking about something else. She says no. She was just worried about him. Another five favorability points and another five favorability points. Kiki is back in her room asking where she was. She asks if she didn't know that the protagonist bought her house. She is shocked by the news and asks if he really bought a house for her. She explains that she was busy visiting the house with him and that it cost 60 million in Anku. Her friend wonders how a president can be so lucky and yet so naive. She picks up her phone and sees something happening on the forums calling Kiki to see it too. The rumor says that Chen Yuan from Ri University is a human trash, involved in multiple relationships simultaneously, and the two of them look at each other. Chen Yuan wonders if he really was trash, saying he was just spending money, and that it's all slander. Three cheese puff eaters are celebrating that they are going to ruin the protagonist's reputation. A guy appears behind them, asking what they were doing. The three are startled and say that the protagonist has been too arrogant, and they are trying to teach him a lesson. The race loser also sees the news about the protagonist and wonders if he isn't the guy from the race. Now that he has the protagonist's name, he remembers beating him up when they were younger. He says they went to the same high school, saying the protagonist was crazy since childhood and has a lot of information about him. The loser says he used to cling to and annoy the girls. The three boys put him in a chair, asking more questions, wanting more details about the protagonist to post and ruin his reputation. Liang says that after winning that race, the protagonist thinks he will get away with it, but he will change how people think about him saying even the coach won't want to help him, calling him the trash of the university. The news says he is the biggest trash there and that he is involved in relationships with multiple women, always objectifying them and warns to be careful with him. One guy adds that the girls he got involved with didn't do so voluntarily. They say he bothered the girls so much that even their grade averages dropped. Everyone seeing this says they never imagined that about him. The girls are in shock. In the president's office, he takes the guy's phone and says the protagonist can't stay at the university, but he will personally investigate Chen Yuan and have him expelled. 
In the next chapter, someone says that Chen Yuan is a very special person, imagining that the protagonist can't see a girl suffering without wanting to spend all this money to help. Kicking the Joker, hate you trash, I hate men who hit women. Whenever night falls, he transforms into a black knight. With strong punches, he ends all evil. A mysterious and powerful man protecting the city of desire and sin, and the one who said this was none other than President Kiki. She says that to her, the protagonist is a hero. The guys ask if calling him a hero isn't an exaggeration and ask where she got that from. Kitty says it's her intuition. The guys wonder if they can trust her testimony. The guy helping the president says she is the vice president of the student council. A bit quirky, but trustworthy. The president frowns, saying he doesn't want to know and asks her to question other people. The president says no one better than him can be in that place. Now they go to talk to Chu Tong. Hello girl, we have some questions about a classmate of yours. His name is Chen Yuan, please come with us, said the interviewer. Chu Tong says he is too good, but she wasn't enough for him. She also says she was a complete idiot and greedy, acknowledging that she wronged the protagonist and wants him to accept her back. And then she starts crying. A policeman gives her a tissue to wipe her tears. The policeman asks Xu Tong if, even after the protagonist rejected her, he still continues to be a good person. The president, observing her desperation, says she deserves everything happening to her, saying she isn't worthy of his love and he did nothing wrong. The stressed president leaves the room angrily, lights a cigarette to ease his jealousy, wondering if he did something wrong. He sees that the protagonist is innocent and people just want to ruin his reputation. Looking down, he sees two people arriving, wondering who they are holding the banner. It's Su Liel and her father. The president introduces himself and asks why they are there. I am Su Liel from the arts department and I wanted to make a banner for Chen Yuan. Her father explains that the protagonist protected his daughter a few days ago and helped his family a lot. The president is even more impressed and jealous of the protagonist. With that, he says goodbye. He says he probably blamed the wrong person and wants to look at the post again, seeing that a girl commented saying if he is trash, she is throwing herself into the dumpster. The girls are all sharing and the protagonist is running. Various girls praise him, saying that when they saw him, their hearts beat faster. The president is impressed because only women are defending him. He thinks people are doing this to him because he stands out so much. The president says he understands Chen Yuan and that he will bring justice and not tolerate any complaints or offenses against him. The president gathers all the students to talk about the rumors regarding Chen Yuan on the school forum. He says he conducted a thorough investigation and admits that the protagonist is honest and that all the rumors about him are mere slander. He is there to clear Chen Yuan's name. The president gives a notice that the protagonist is willing to help everyone, mentioning that Chen Yuan has protected many people and doesn't like to take credit, hence keeping it a secret. He heaps praises on Chen Yuan and almost crying, presents him with an award for people who positively contribute to society, advising all students to learn from their classmate. The protagonist wonders what is happening, saying he doesn't understand anything and why he is receiving this certificate if it was for protecting someone. Liang wonders what is going on, cursing the president since the protagonist's reputation was supposed to be destroyed, saying he should be in Chen Yuan's place. He notices his girlfriend is making some compliments about the protagonist, and a favorability rises. Another 10, another 10. The meeting ends and everyone is leaving. She asks if he's gone mad or isn't feeling well and why he is so jealous of the protagonist. She says she has genuine admiration for her classmate. Even after helping so many people, Chen Yuan doesn't care about fame or wealth. She brings up him winning the race against Liang and yet not wanting to join the track team, saying this act is a sign of incredible people. He grabs her wrist forcefully. She tells him to shut up and let go, saying he's hurting her. The loser gets close to her. Ken Yuan is useless, Liang starts boasting about having a Tesla and many more things than him. But right next to them, the protagonist calls the bald man to pick him up, saying he doesn't want to be picked up in an expensive car and wants to maintain a humble profile. This is just the illustrated head who came in one of the new cars. The bald man apologizes, saying he was sure on time, so he came in that car. The protagonist gets angry and tells him to pay more attention as he said not to come in an expensive car. The guy says he understood the message. Both of them look on. And with that, the protagonist leaves. Liang's girlfriend says she's tired of the situation and wants to break up. He says that's impossible, but he ends up desolate on the ground. Ken Yuan transfers some money to the bald man. The guy thanks him. The protagonist says that while everything is being resolved, he will return to school. The bald man offers a ride, but Chen Yuan says it's unnecessary, as the car draws too much attention. The guy says okay, and just asks the protagonist to be careful. Walking through the city, the protagonist says that the priority is President Zhao, needing just a little more to complete the system and get the 25 attribute points. He says he has to buy something for her and wonders if the chubby guy has anything to sell again. Looking at the group chat, everyone comments that even with a bit of conversation, the protagonist bought the house. One guy says Chen Yuan has a lot of money available. The protagonist tells them to relax, saying he bought it just to help a friend. The guys are shocked when the protagonist shows up. Everyone in the group adores him. A guy with the car photo asks if he doesn't want to buy a luxury car, saying he knows some people who sell them. Then a guy calls him, saying that the Zhang family has a small business with imported cars, 
and it's a pleasure to meet the protagonist. The protagonist looks at the card and sees it says, John Group. Chen Yuan imagines that his family has a giant industry, and that he must be a second-generation rich kid. He tells Zhang that managing such a big car business at his age is impressive. The guy says he thought the protagonist was older, considering he bought that house. They chat, and from a distance, two girls wonder who Chen Yuan is, thinking he must be the son of some wealthy family, given that manager Zhang received him, but they dismiss him, thinking they have no chance with him. The manager doesn't want to brag, but says he has the store with the largest collection of luxury cars in the city, saying the protagonist can ask for any car he wants. The protagonist thinks of the legendary car and says he wants a Bugatti Chiron. The guy thinks Chen Yuan must be joking as there are very few units. The protagonist says he doesn't have it, and Zhang feels embarrassed. Chen Yuan asks if they have a Lamborghini Veneno. Zhang responds that they do not. The protagonist asks if they have a Pavani Huera. Zhang replies that they don't have that either. The salesperson is sweating profusely, saying that Chen Yuan is rooming the place. The manager explains that the vehicles they have for sale range from 2 to 8 million and the cars the protagonist wants are a bit out of that range. The protagonist is disappointed, saying he expected more from Zhang, who claimed to have luxury cars. Zhang thinks the protagonist must be joking since he bought a house at that price, but it seems he wants a car of similar value. The manager says they don't have the cars he wants, but they do have a Ferrari La Ferrari that he should take a look at. He mentions it is one of Ferrari's rarest cars, with a V12 engine producing 800 horsepower, dual transmission, and it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers slash at in under 3 seconds, costing only 22 million. He asks for the protagonist's opinion on the car. Ken Yuan says that Ferraris aren't considered very expensive but not cheap either, and that it might be the perfect gift for President Zhao. The protagonist says if the price is above 20 million, the deal is done. Ken Yuan commends Zhang for his effort and says he wants to swipe the card right away. He asks if the car can be delivered to Riverside Villa, community number one. The guy sweating nervously says he can arrange that. Ken Yuan receives a call from Liu Wenji, shouting in his ear. In the next chapter, one of the protagonist's friends says that on his birthday, his girlfriend Jiu Jia said she was getting her nails done with a friend, but he grew suspicious since she had been out for a long time. It started to rain and he knew she hadn't taken an umbrella, so in a chivalrous act, he went to give her one. But what he saw at that moment would break anyone's heart. He saw her cheating on him in the rain. He tells the protagonist that his heart won't stop hurting since they had a three-year relationship and he was already planning the wedding to meet your parents. Ken Yuan says it's okay, and that he has drunk eight bottles, so it's better to take a break. But the heartbroken guy wants to know how to win her back. The protagonist says he needs to keep his head on straight, that the mistake was hers, not his, and loudly tells him he's becoming a bootlicker. The sad guy collapses to the floor, asking the protagonist if it isn't hard to accept, and that he can't accept that she betrayed him. The protagonist, now angry, says he needs to learn a lesson and grabs his phone. His friend asks who he's calling and what his plan is. Ken Yuan tells him to relax and trust him, that from now on, he will handle everything, and he will make sure his ex-girlfriend kneels before him and begs for forgiveness. The protagonist calls the dealership guy, who answers promptly. Chen Yuan says he wants to borrow some cars, but nothing too expensive, just those worth over 20 million, and says he needs some trusted friends to drive them tomorrow. The dealership guy says no problem and that he will arrange everything for tomorrow. The protagonist's friend is still confused. Ken Yuan calls Exu Liel. His friend observes that with just one call, he brought a beautiful girl and asks where the Chen Yuan who used to lick girls' boots has gone and why it now seems like she is licking his boots. Hey Xu Liel, this is my brother Wenji, said the protagonist, introducing his friend. She is confused, thinking the protagonist called her just to introduce a friend, but she thinks a bit more and creates an idea that maybe he wants her to meet his close friends. But the protagonist quickly responds that it has nothing to do with that and that he just needs her help with a little prank that will happen. The next day, the protagonist's friend shows up looking gangster. Xu Liel clings to his arm, saying he scared her, that the car he bought for her almost hit someone. The protagonist's friend is all nervous and says that if she had hit him, there would be no problem as they could just buy another, stammering a few times. Chen Yuan's friend's ex-girlfriend wonders how he transformed into that guy looking like a second-generation rich kid. She asks if Wenji came there just to show off. He says someone there was barking, stuttering nervously. The ex pissed, asks what he's doing, asking if he doesn't know she knows his family. She admits her mistake but says he's being shameless, acting that way. In the car, another friend says that the woman understood everything. The brothers are about to step onto the stage, and the show is about to begin, said the protagonist. Several guys arrive in Ferreras. A guy with white hair steps out and asks Wenji if everything is okay and if he recognizes him, approaching to talk to the new boyfriend of Wenji's cheating ex. Little girl, he said his name is Makai, right? His family owns a mine? Had this guy is always a liar, pretending he has something to impress girls. And you think what? That he's a second generation rich kid. Wake up to reality, ma'am, said the white haired guy. The guy caught cheating with Wenji's ex asks the white haired guy to let him go. The white haired guy says that these guys' tactics never change and that they only manage to fool innocent girls, adding that Wenji's ex is already lost. 
The girl, now furious at being deceived, goes after the guy she cheated on Wenji with. Wenji just watches and tells everyone to leave, but his ex clings to his leg, begging him not to leave her behind, saying it's not that she only likes luxury, but she's just afraid of poverty and asking for another chance. Wenji tells her not to call him by that name and that this is the last time they will see each other, asking her never to contact him again. The guy takes a look around, seeing everyone talking. He tries to leave, but bumps into the protagonist's chest. Ken Yuan asks if he wants to flee, but only if he takes 100 slaps. At the bar, everyone driving the Ferreras celebrates finally meeting the famous Mr. Yuan. The protagonist says they go mean to do that and thanks everyone for their help. The guys tell Lu's cigarette that it's all good because he's a friend of Chef Zhang and he doesn't need to be formal with them. The white-haired guy asks if he isn't the guy from the streaming platform news and says he has a request. The protagonist asks what this favor is. The guys are staring at each other. The white-haired guy says he has a favorite streamer, but is out of money and asks if Chen Yuan can give a little help. The protagonist thinking the guys are trying to see how much money the protagonist has. The dealership guy tells the protagonist not to worry, saying it was just a joke, and looks at the white-haired guy, saying if he wants to hit on a girl, he should handle it himself. Loose cigarette slams his glass on the table. The guys imagine he didn't like the joke. The protagonist says the joke was too mild for him because it's just about sending gifts. He says he'll go to the bathroom, leaving his phone on the table for the guy to spend as much as he wants. The guy takes the phone, indignant that he's being allowed to use it freely, trusting a stranger to spend his money. Ken Yuan thanks him, knowing there's no money in the account to pay for all the drinks, but knows the guy can send gifts at will. The protagonist goes to relieve himself. The guy looks around, imagining a dragon against a chick, and mutters, He, good kid. Coming out of the bathroom, Chen Yuan sees everyone gathered, wondering what's happening. My god, 1004, 1006, damn man, everyone around the table says. The protagonist arrives at the table, asking why they're acting like that. The white-haired guy gets nervous and returns the phone. The protagonist calls him weak because he spent only 20 million while he was in the bathroom. The guys go crazy, wondering if he has more money than a bank. The protagonist is indignant that he only spent 13 million and says not even 20 million is much, saying he'll spend 60 million. The guy grabs his hand, saying it's enough spending. She won't be comfortable with all that money. The dealership guy arrives and tells the white-haired guy that he couldn't win and proposes a toast to Chief Yuan. The guy starts the toast. Honorable Chief Yan, from now on, I follow your leadership. The onlookers wonder who the guy in the middle of the circle is. They say the white-haired guy is quite rich, but he seems to be getting involved with the protagonist. Chen Yuan's phone rings, he takes a look, bidding farewell to the group. The blue-haired guy realizes the protagonist's plan and says he's running away because he doesn't want to pay the bill, but another guy calls him crazy and asks if he didn't see the money spent in front of them, and the guy just agrees. The message was from the little streamer saying she's in town and can't wait to meet him. The protagonist says he's free tomorrow and sends her some kisses. Chen Yuan gives a stare and says that after a long time, he will reap the rewards of his kindness. Arriving, she thinks it will just be a date and that with her charm, she won't have any problems. The next chapter starts with a huge message. It's from Chu Tong, saying they can start over, and that she imagined them traveling the world, tasting all the dishes, but when she woke up, she saw she was alone and asked for his forgiveness. The protagonist went there, blocked, and deleted her contact because of his date with a little streamer. The girl asks what he was doing. But Chen Yuan says it was nothing important and asks what she was talking about. She remembers the boss scolding her, saying he spends more than all her fans in a day, and even if she has to strip and put him to sleep, she must capture him. The little streamer thinks that even with her beautiful face, he seems indifferent to her and is disheartened that she can't win over. She tries to seduce him with her charm, asking him how he got so rich at such a young age. However, the system sends a message saying her favorability is too high and it's unable to connect. The protagonist realizes he needs to lower her favorability first and wonders what to do. He starts doing disgusting things to lower her favorability to create the connection, like putting his feet on the table. He tells her he's just an unemployed guy who got lucky. She's outraged that he doesn't work but has money to spend. The protagonist says he only uses his father's money and that they are going bankrupt, owing millions to the banks. He says he arranged this meeting to see if he could get back the money he gave her because he spent too much. She is disgusted when he doesn't wash his hands after picking his nose, but at least the protagonist's plan is working, as he loses 20 favorability points. She can't take it anymore and asks why he asked her out if he's poor, saying that asking for gifts back shows he's not an honorable person. Lose 20, lose 20, lose 20. She says she must have been crazy to agree to go out with a loser like him. The little streamer calls someone, saying she met the protagonist and he keeps bothering her, thinking he might be a stalker. The protagonist is dismayed to find such a dishonest woman calling her shameless for changing her demeanor so quickly. A guy bursts through the door, asking who's bothering his woman. She runs to him, saying she was scared to death of the pervert Chen Yuan. The guy ignores her and approaches. Brother Yuan, you're here too, said a Shopee protagonist. The guy is impressed to meet Chen Yuan, saying it's an honor to know him. She is confused, not understanding why Mr. Yuan is being so polite to him. 
The guy is one of the richest second-generation hares, owning several industries in the area. He slams the table, calling her stupid, saying she's bothering one of the most important men, calling him poor. She wonders why he's doing this, thinking the protagonist was testing her sincerity and realizing she messed up big time. The little streamer knows she needs to win him back and starts apologizing, begging for his forgiveness. With that, the system connects with her. The protagonist takes a look and says it's fine that she's just a young, inexperienced girl. She says she understands and that he truly is her favorite. Plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 favorability points. Ken Yuan wonders if this is how people make a living by seducing others, thinking that as long as they can get money, favorability will rise. He says he won't let her go that easily. The guy from the date slams the table, saying he spent a lot of money on her to boost her fame, and she treats one of his best friends like that. The guy invites the protagonist to an honor event. The protagonist says he can go without problems and that he's doing it out of respect for their friendship. Chen Yuan gets into the car. The little streamer says she wants to go too. In the car, she hugs him and asks if he's mad at her, saying she really understands she was wrong. The protagonist takes out his phone and opens the streaming platform. He says it's okay, and she's worrying too much. Chen Yuan opens a live stream of a well-behaved girl, telling the viewers to follow her. The little streamer watches in amazement as he makes donations. The girl on the stream goes wild with the gifts, not understanding anything. She faints from the amount of money she received. The little streamer is impressed with how quickly the protagonist spends his money. She says all that money should be for her, and that he must be joking. Plus 30 favorability points. The girl says she wishes his fingers were tapping the screen, but her body instead, and he gains another 30 favorability points. He watches, saying she's crazy for enjoying watching him humiliate her by giving money to others. Arriving at the location, the guy welcomes the protagonist, saying it's the most reputable private restaurant in the city, only accessible with a special membership invitation, and it has three important features. The protagonist is confused about the three important features, guessing impressive food a unique setting, but can't figure out the last one. The guy is impressed he guessed two and says he wouldn't be able to guess the third. Ken Yuan sees the president playing her instrument and the guy says that's the third point, the chef's daughter, Zhao Yuki. She stands up and they exchange confused glances. She sees the little streamer clinging to the protagonist's arm and he loses five favorability points as she breaks her instrument, sad and tearful. The protagonist sees her run away, complaining that he was so close to a counterattack and wondering if he can take advantage of the situation and fix everything at once. He throws her against the wall and she says he's a big idiot for playing with her feelings. Shen Yuan says he can't lose this chance, that if he lets her go, he doesn't know how he'll fix it later. And then he takes a risk, asking if she has seen a particular movie. She asks what he's talking about, saying she's tired of him, and now he's asking about movies. But Chen Yuan lights a cigarette and says he's the son of a tycoon, asking if she knows he has an extraordinary background and must be wondering why he lives such a mundane life. He says that in his family there's a secret rule. When someone turns 18, they must spend 10 billion in a month to receive a fortune of 50 billion. The protagonist explains that his focus is to spend this money, saying he's invested in various projects, activities, donations, and environmental protections, and mentions that this girl was a streamer he donated to because he needed to spend the money. He says this situation was just a small misunderstanding, and that everything he told her is a secret that only she knows, asking her to understand. Ken Yuan says this is a secret he's been carrying for a long time and bids her farewell. Kiki says she's causing more and more trouble for him, and it's so hard to see how he will inherit this fortune. She sees Shen Yuan and hugs him. She says she's not ready to say goodbye to him and that it was a mistake for her to think that way about him. Hugging him, she thinks he really cares about her because he revealed a family secret. With that, she gains 20 favorability points. On the way back, she apologizes for getting stressed out, saying it wasn't intentional, and that Chen Yuan is her friend too and that she'll pay his bill. The guy is impressed that in less than five minutes, he managed to make up with the president. However, the little streamer is not happy at all, very angry, saying Kiki thinks she's all that, but she's the one who will win Chen Yuan. At the table, she asks what his relationship with the president is. But then the president says the protagonist hasn't revealed his real name yet and that it's good for her to call him brother from now on since he's probably younger than her. The guy says the president is dominating the interaction. Just staring at her, the little streamer holds herself back. Ken Yuan tells the two of them to stop and to eat quickly because he's hungry. The two of them glare at each other. The guy says Yuan doesn't care about anything and that he's very mysterious. One's a famous streamer from the shark platform, a wealth reaper, and the other is a renowned talented woman with aspirations higher than the skies. He says the protagonist has the best of both worlds to choose from for his future. He says Chen Yuan has surpassed the art of seducing women and can be called a succubus for girls. At first he was impressed by his wealth, but now he will follow him as a spiritual idol until he kicks the bucket. At home, Chen Yuan says that restaurant was too expensive and thanks Kiki for paying as an apology. He says he'll check how the strategy is going and that Chu Tong and Su Liu are still his bootlickers and sees that the president's favorability is at 91 and the little streamers at 92. 
The protagonist sees the high points and wonders if it's good to make an aggressive move. He notices someone behind the president and asks if it's Liang's girlfriend, seeing she has 76 favorability points. He remembers it was 25 when he raced and wonders if his charm has increased these days. Guys rush by saying there's a guy confessing to a girl. A guy wanting to love and be loved. The protagonist says it's getting rare to find genuine love these days. Downstairs, a crowd is watching with a heart made of candles, the cuckold playing guitar and declaring his love, saying he still loves her, that he was always wrong, didn't want to be ignorant to her, and promises never to be violent again. He asks her to think about the past and give him a chance. The most faithful girl in China is staring at him half confused. The protagonist arrives asking what's going on. But the cruelest woman strikes again. She slaps the bouquet of roses and runs away. Liang keeps saying she doesn't need to run since her true love is right there. She arrives and asks if his name is Chen Yuan saying she finally found him and begs him to add her. The guys go crazy, wondering why she's going to another guy. Liang says she disappointed him. The protagonist talks to him about his frustrated expression and asks if the situation was incomprehensible. Liang asks if he doesn't want to close the coffin lid right away. Ken Yuan says he's always been envious of his good looks and athletic talent and he always won the hearts of girls, but now that he's lost, he's panicking. He says the mind consumed by the desire for victory made him ignore his girlfriend's feelings. He's the one who pushed her away bit by bit and now he's on the ground playing the victim. The guy admits he's right and then it's his fault. Several girls are watching, wondering what's going on. They say if he was aggressive, he doesn't deserve dignity, and if he treated her badly, there's nothing to resolve. The girl stares at the protagonist, saying he understands her. With that, her favorability reaches 91. Even though Chen Yuan did nothing, he didn't give money, just looked at the girl a few times and she already loved him. The president's friend says she needs to find a way to talk to Kiki to warn her that she's not the only one talking to the protagonist. She opens the door desperately, asking if she has any problems and saying that Chen Yuan is cheating on her and that she should stop everything because of it. She leaves a like in the video to help Mamoru make more juicy content for his viewers, activate the cheeky little bell, and I'm out. Do you remember that the last chapter ended when the protagonist humiliated the submissive cuckold? And Zhang was still thinking that our guru understood her very well, 21 favorability points. However, Kiki's friend was there and ran to tell her everything. She arrived at Kiki's room screaming while Kiki was doing her skincare routine, saying she was being cheated on. But Kiki said that was impossible because Chen Yuan was a prince who would never betray her. Her friend was about to say he was downstairs talking about feelings with another girl, but Kiki interrupted her, saying it didn't matter if others confessed to him. However, Xiaofei pointed to the phone and asked what she thought about him spending money on another woman. Once again, Kiki said it was okay, he had already informed her about it, and he had plenty of money. She can pat her friend's head saying that the most important thing in a relationship is trust, and he was telling her everything. The poor friend was devastated, thinking that her once smart friend was now completely deluded. Meanwhile, Chen Yuan was dying of sleepiness. His friend was angry, asking who gets sleepy in the middle of a mystery game. In front of him were two girls with hearts on their faces, saying he could go back to sleep and that he looked so handsome unconscious, which was a bit dangerous, my friend. His friend told him to understand that it was just because he was handsome that they were there so he needed to help him get something too. But our protagonist wants to know why she is there too. Obviously, the famous Chu Tong who was eager to get back at the protagonist. His friend said he was worried about her because he heard she was going to the hospital a lot, and Chen Yuan wondered if he had really gone that far. Remembering the first time he got the legendary rejection, he thinks she might really want to apologize. But it was her fault for acting that way. But is he being too heartless? He is in a dilemma. The girls want to know if he is the famous loose cigarette from the internet, especially since he uses the same name on WhatsApp. He was starting to talk when Chu Tong's ears perked up to listen. Suddenly, a voice in the room said that if he really were that guy, he would let them use his head as a bowling ball. There was a guy in a blue suit who told him to stop comparing himself to that rich guy. Ken Yuan seemed to recognize this guy. The same guy went up to Chu Tong and introduced himself as Lai Yun Tao and asked for her contact. She was a bit embarrassed and shy, clearly. The girl was no good. Ken Yuan remembered that this guy always made his life miserable in high school, using his family's connections. But he is willing to let this guy show off, as he doesn't want everyone to know he has money. But looking at Chu Tong, he thinks it's time to test her. He stands next to Lai Yun Tao and introduces him to everyone, saying he's a high-class guy with lots of money and successful businesses. He then explains to everyone that the reason he has a bit of money lately is only because of the demolition of his family home, nothing more. Chu Tong is shocked to realize that Chen Yuan is not the famous loose cigarette. On the left side is a guy with many companies and wealth, and on the right side is a poor guy who liked her a little. Her favorability starts to drop and her bootlicking system crashes with 15 points. But this makes the protagonist smile and Chu Tong runs to add the guy. She has a villainous look on her face, saying that even an idiot knows who the better option is. Lai Yun Tao tells Chen Yuan that it's funny. The girl he introduced just added him. He gets close to Chen Yuan's ear and says he got stepped on in the middle school style and will continue to get stepped on. Chen Yuan seems to notice something. As Lai Yun Tao leaves, he says he will pay the bill for everyone there. 
While Chen Yuwen starts to joke or laugh, everyone wonders what's going on. He says it's nothing, and that he just realized a few things. While thinking he gave Chu Tan the best opportunity she could have, she clearly showed her claws again. From now on, he won't have any sympathy because she doesn't deserve it. As he leaves, Lai Yun Tao asks if he's already leaving and says that tomorrow they will have a middle school reunion. Ken Yuan thinks about it and then tells him that if it's just middle school people, he will definitely show up. In a fancy restaurant in room 888, the reunion is already happening, and everyone is happy and celebrating each other's success, especially Lai Yun Tao's. In the middle of the crowd, Chen Yuan is invisible. He thinks that Lai Yun Tao never misses a chance to show off. Suddenly, the door opens and a girl with immense respect walks in. She apologizes, saying that the taxi took a long time. Chen Yuan recognizes her as Xiao Ruyu, the moonlight that illuminated his high school days. She was mysterious and noble, like an unsolvable equation. Suddenly, the Dan poet emerges. He gives a little smile and approaches, asking if they can exchange contacts. Li Yun Tao gets angry, saying that he will regret doing that. Ruyu thinks she has seen him somewhere before and replies that it's no problem if they can exchange contacts. With this, the bootlicking relationship was established and she has an appearance score of 9.2. Someone shouts from the middle of the table that Chen Yuan has never been anything special, so why is he being so bold? One of the girls says that he is pretending to be rich and is actually shameful. She warns everyone that Chen Yuan hangs out with some second-generation rich kids who harm many women. One of Chen Yuan's friends says that she has no idea what she's talking about. She says that Chen Yuan made her get humiliated by her ex-boyfriend. I think it was that guy who delivered the car and made her suffer. Crying, she says she is sure that Chen Yuan only asked for Ruyu's number to sell it to his friends. Ruyu looks on and starts losing favorability because of this. Yun Tao takes the opportunity to ask Chen Yuan if he is so poor that he needs to lean on others, and if he wants, he has a job for him. Chen Yuan, seeing the two insulting him at the same time, thinks that they are plotting together. But if they are showing their faces, he will have to step on them. He sends a message to Hao Qian, telling him to come to this restaurant with a Ferrari. A while later, everyone is going downstairs to leave. Yun Tao is confident that Chen Yuan and his friend will never show up here again. He asks Ruiyu if she wants him to take her home, but she declines. An attendant approaches Yun Tao, asking him to move his car, and he gets angry. How come he has to move it from the restaurant parking lot? The guy tries to explain that after 9 p.m., the restaurant is reserved for VIPs only. Yun Tao wonders who this so-called VIP is. Sitting in his car, he is impressed. In front of him is a Ferrari he has only seen in exhibits, costing over 20 million. Suddenly, he sees Zhang Hoshin getting out of the car and recognizes him. He starts sweating and feels embarrassed because he has heard how important this guy is. But then Chen Yuan greets Hoshin, who smiles. He thanks Hoshin for bringing his car and Hoshin says it's always good to help the boss. Yun Tao is in disbelief, wondering, wait a minute, this car belongs to Chen Yuan? People start questioning if Chen Yuan is really that rich. And the girls say that the one girl had lied, claiming he needed others. Ruiyu immediately realizes that this girl and Yun Tao were trying to tarnish Chen Yuan's reputation. However, despite being humiliated, he didn't bother defending himself against these people. She finds this quite interesting and her favorability rises by 20 points. Seeing this, the rascal smiles and asks her if he could have the honor of escorting her home. She agrees. The class is now all in love with Chen Yuan, and his friends take the chance to poke fun at Yun Tao. Google image, photos of a busy avenue, copy and paste. Inside, Ruiyu feels a bit uneasy, perhaps she was too hasty in getting into this car. Ken Yuan tells her that he has been paying attention. The pendant on her bag is a Dikotaman. She is impressed that he recognizes it, it's a character from a Chinese cartoon. He tells her that he loves watching that series and seeing the transformations, and she says she has always liked it too. She glances at him, feeling a bit embarrassed, and smiles. While he thinks she's very cute, perhaps her cold attitude is just a protective measure. Seeing her beautiful face makes it irresistible to want to protect her. The boy didn't last three words. He says he is experiencing the feeling of love for the first time in his life, wow, at her house. He makes a gesture representing that and I'm saying it was really nice to meet her. And she returns the gesture, thanking him for bringing her home. They stand there like two idiots laughing. As he leaves, she says that he is interesting, different from the rich guys. He doesn't try to boss her around and just has fun. She then enters her house and is immediately scolded by her mother. Who wants to know if she went on that blind date her mother set up? She must remember that her father's business is at a crucial moment, and they have no choice. However, Royo cries, saying she won't marry just to help the company, her feelings are important. But her mother says it is her duty since everything she eats or wears is paid for by them. And if her father's company goes bankrupt, they will all be ruined. The boy from the Han family may not seem that interesting, but the situation is more important than feelings. Crying, she says she understands, and a tear falls on the little doll. Chen Yuan is just watching the group of millionaires. When the guy with the car mentions he has some crazy news, Chen Yuan gets curious. Then he finds out that Ruiyu is going to marry a chubby guy with horrible hair just because of her family's bankruptcy. He starts wondering if he got involved in this whole mess. 
But remembering her, he questions whether she will really get married. Ever since high school, he couldn't take his eyes off her. No, he won't let this happen. This time, he will be decisive and won't let life pass him by like this. A girl with glasses asks if it was Chen Yuan passing by, and the guy says it seems like it was indeed him. Suddenly, she stops him, introduces herself as Shen Shuyu, and asks if he wants to become an internet celebrity. Chen Yuan takes a look at the car and apologizes, saying he's not interested. Seeing that he responded so quickly, she believes he has already received offers from other companies and decides to try something different. Carrying three bags full of content, she starts talking about how their company is huge and extremely competitive in terms of the payment they offer. Besides, you might not know, but on their platform, they have the famous loose cigarette. If he doesn't sign with them, he better be careful not to be hated by the cigarette guy. Chen Yuan gets angry. The damn girl doesn't even know he is the loose cigarette and is here wasting his time. She is in his face while he wonders if she thinks he won't do anything. So if he grabs his phone, thinking that since he won't do anything, someone else will do it for him. He goes to the rich kid's group and talks about her name and her company, asking if anyone can help and resolve this. She keeps insisting when her boss calls her, ordering her to return to the company immediately, or she will be out of a job. Confused, she tells her boss she didn't do anything. Meanwhile, Chen Yuan is just angry with his hand group trying to steal Ruya from him. In the car, the mother says they are just going to meet. She doesn't need to be so sad. Besides, this will help a lot with the financial crisis. Suddenly, she receives a message from Chen Yuan asking where she is. She mentions the restaurant and he says he'll be there to help her. She wonders if Chen Yuan already knows about the blind date. If she were to compare that disgusting hand guy with Chen Yuan, he seems much more attractive. Her father says he has never asked her for anything, so he hopes she will consider things. Everyone in the car stays silent and she says she understands. The car then stops in front of the luxurious restaurant and someone comes to guide them. However, the guy is already drooling, saying that soon she will become the property of the Han family. Seeing a briefcase in the guy's hand, she finds it strange that they are bringing so many documents to a blind date. They then enter the room. The father of the Han family greets them with his son, Pineapple Head, who is already drooling on the side. Ruyu immediately notices a lot of documents on the table. This is clearly not a blind date. She wants to know what her father is planning. That father is filthy trash, right? You can't sell your daughter even if you're eating dirt and mud. Ruyu knows how influential this group is in the city, and Han Sanchu, Pineapple Head's father, is a very perverse guy. He approaches Ruyu and says she is much prettier in person. She says she doesn't deserve so many compliments while sending a message to Chen Yuan, informing him that she is in room 305. Pineapple Head approaches her, saying he is excited about their relationship and that she doesn't need to worry, her family's business will be very successful. She pulls her hand away, saying thanks awkwardly. He puts his hand on her back, saying she doesn't need to be polite. Gives her a squeeze, saying they will be family. But she slaps him, asking who said they would become family, and tells him to take his hand off. The worst father ever seen in all stories even argues with her, saying she's being rude. With tears in her eyes, she doesn't have much to say. Her father turns to Han Sanchu and says that his daughter is very young and doesn't know what's best for her, but they can take a look at the contract. A man arrives and begins to explain all the details. They will buy 20% of her father's company for 100 million on the condition that she marries Pineapple Head. However, this money will be invested in stocks they control, and they will only be able to access the 100 million once she gives birth to a child with Pineapple Head. She is shocked and immediately grabs the document, asking if they are seriously talking about having a child in this. She cries, looking at her father, asking if he really brought her there to sell her this way. Her mother tells her to calm down, but she refuses. Crying, she asks why their failure has to affect her life. She declares that she knows Pineapple Head is addicted to alcohol, prostitution, and gambling. She will never marry him. The disgraceful father slaps her across the face, leaving her in disbelief with a red cheek. This story is getting better than Mexican soap opera, folks. Her father yells that he spoiled her too much, and she only thinks of herself. He raised a child, apparently. She is confused by his words, saying she only thinks of herself. Her mother says she needs to be more sincere and understand that if she doesn't do this, the whole family will collapse. But Ruyu argues that it doesn't make sense. If things go wrong, they can start over together and rebuild everything. Her mother shows that she is also despicable and falls to her knees, begging her daughter. Begging her to have mercy on her poor mother. Everyone in the room is shocked by this. Ruyu tells her to get up and asks what she is doing. But her mother says she has no other choice. She will only get up if Ruyo agrees to this. Ruyo doesn't know what to say. The poor girl is lost. Pineapple Head says she can trust him to deliver the heavens and stars to her. At this moment, the poor girl gives up and realizes that this is her fate. Being born into this rich family means she has to sacrifice certain parts of her life. Without any expression, she tells her mother she will accept and her mother can get up. Immediately, her mother's tears stop as genuine as my promise to stop looking at 3D wafers on family-friendly sites. She stands up, congratulating her daughter. Sanchu says that now that she's agreed, they should sign the contracts immediately. The guy starts taking the documents out of the briefcase. 
While Sanshu says this will be great, as soon as the marriage happens, their company will boom. Meanwhile, Pineapple Head is now licking his lips, angry that she initially refused to accept, already imagining the fun he will have with her. Everyone in the room is silent while she doesn't even sit in the chair. But suddenly, Chen Yuan arrives, kicking the door open. The first to notice is Ruyo, and no one in the room can believe it. Chen Yuan says they are very brave and have lost their sense of danger to be doing this. Ruyo is ecstatic to see him. Pineapple Head comes running, asking if he is tired of living. But he immediately gets a slap and falls, breaking everything in the room. Chen Yuan calls him a fool and tells him to disappear. The guard asks if he has any idea who he is messing with and if he knows the status of the family's present. Ken Yuan laughs, saying it's a family that sells their daughter and another that buys her. He wants to see who has the courage to touch him. Sanchu tells everyone to be quiet while thinking how does this kid know they are there and still does this. He realizes this boy is not that simple. He then approaches and asks Shen Yuan which family he is from, to which he replies that he is not qualified to know. Pineapple Head tries to shout, but his father tells him to shut up. Ken Yuan looks at Ruyo and tells her she can relax because he will help her family's difficulties. He goes to the table to look the contract while her father asks what he is doing. Ken Yuan says her father is suffering from brain failure for selling his daughter at such a low price. He tears up the papers, saying he will buy 60% of their company for 500 million. People can't believe it, 500 million? Sanchu starts sweating, realizing that for someone to spend 500 million like that, their family must be worth at least 10 billion. However, he can't figure out where this kid came from even though he knows all the families around here. Ruyu's father gets excited about such a large sum of money. Not only can he restore the company, but he can also even expand it. But Chen Yuan says that to provide the 500 million, he has one condition. He points to Ruyu, who wonders if he really wants to buy her for that price. She drops her bag to the floor, feeling desolate, thinking that Chen Yuan is just like all the others in the end. Once again, she cries over her little doll. Then Chen Yuan reveals that his condition is that 60% of the company must be transferred to her name. As soon as she has more than half of the company, he will transfer to 500 million. Now she is radiant, feeling like a bird released from its cage. Double meaning, yes or no. She sees Chen Yuan as a hero. And obviously, her favorability starts to rise and rise, instantly reaching 85. A guy arrives with a contract and says all she needs to do is sign it. He gently holds her hand, saying that after she signs this, she will have control over her own life. Immediately, the money is transferred to the accounts of the worst family members in the world, who become emotional. Her father asks Chen Yuan if he really will only ask for this, and Chen Yuan says that's all. However, he warns that from now on, he controls the rise or fall of his family. And it's best if her father does nothing more to cause Ruya pain. Then he tells her there is nothing left to be said there, and they should leave. Sanshu suddenly changes his mind, saying he really recognizes Chen Yuan's hard work and tells him not to take what his son did to heart, while imagining that he is some kind of money god for spending 500 million out of nowhere. Seeing this, her father knows it wouldn't be smart to become his adversary. Pineapple Head starts yelling at his father, saying that he was the first to be hit. And now he gets hit a second time for being a fool. As he is being beaten, Chen Yuan walks out the door with Ruyo. Some time later in the Ferrari, she thanks him for saving her. He says nothing has changed, it's not the first time he has saved her. In a flashback, Rui was riding her bike home, worried she wouldn't meet anyone strange. Of course, she met the most honest people in society who wanted to talk to her. One of them even offered an ear cleaning, but from afar, someone was running towards her, and he arrived, headbutting one in the stomach. While holding off the guys, he told her she could run and not look back. She ran while Chen Yuan stayed there, getting beaten. She was so desperate at the time that she didn't remember his face. Later, she returned with the police to the same place, but the boy was already gone. Crying her eyes out, she says she never imagined she would find the person who saved her once. She gets all excited, saying she never expected it would be him. Another 10 favorability points, and with that, we reach the legendary 95 and the counterattack is ready. The system detects that he spent 500 million to bootlick her, and in return, he will gain 50 million for himself. Moreover, he gains several attribute points, proficiency in English, French, Russian, and Korean. Good heavens, he became a polyglot. Ken Yuan is amazed. The system worked, and the deal was quick this time. Staring at her, he thinks it's too good to be true. He never had the courage to talk to her and could only watch from a distance. The only time he could do something was to save her. But it was an action that always brought him pride. He takes a look, and they get closer to feel each other's breath. When of course the phone rings and they separate. It's Zhao Yu, and now it's complicated. She says she has already moved into the house and bought some furniture. Does he know what day tomorrow is? He says yes, tomorrow is her birthday, and he has already bought several presents. While thinking it's a critical moment, in the middle of the house with the changes, she asks him not to be too extravagant when meeting her friends. He says it's fine, he will think about what to bring as a gift. While her friend is just wanting to set up the furniture, she never revealed it, but she finds it wonderful to have a house worth 60 million. Crazy in the head, Chen Yuan says his friend is organizing a birthday party and asks if she wants to go. His strategy is that if he leaves things very exposed, 
No one will doubt him since he isn't hiding anything. However, she tells him not to worry and to go ahead. She has plenty to handle. But she isn't foolish and isn't asking questions she knows won't get answered. He says it's a pity because she would be the most beautiful one there, and she replies that when she has a chance, she will visit. But he's just being polite. He knows that if she really accepts, things will get complicated. Meanwhile, she is confident in her charm, believing she can win even if there are more beautiful women. This one loves competition. Getting out of the car, she thanks Chen Yuan for everything he did today. He tells her that if she feels bad for not being able to accompany him today, she can repay him in another way. She gives him a 500 million kiss on the cheek. However, she warns him that now he is marked by her and belongs to her. Ken Yuan suffers. As he is getting back in the car, thinking about going home to play some games, someone suddenly asks if that's his car. When he looks back, it's Chu Tom, shocked with her thumb out. Door closed, car on the road, and she was ignored. Her friend then says it looks like he lied last time and was just testing her again. Ku Tong is shocked for the tenth time. She messed up again and asked her friend what she should do to get him back. Her friend says it's not possible, she missed her chance. But maybe she can. Ku Tong is stunned. She gets angry, asking if she really is thinking of trying something with Chen Yuan. Her friend says he is amazing, so why wouldn't she try since Chu Tong can't anymore? Chu Tong starts radiating like Goku, pulling her hair and now they're fighting over nothing. Our boy just closed the door. They're fighting, getting uglier and uglier. Lying on the ground with everyone recording. A while later, she is desolate, having lost the man and her friend. Ken Yuan keeps improving and the distance between them keeps growing. This way, she has no more chance. Suddenly, someone tells her to stop crying. It's Shen Shui from Dreamland, asking if she's interested in becoming an internet celebrity, and that Sheena was a way to help her get Chen Yuan back. At home, Chen Yuan is just wondering what to give Kiki as a present. When he was about to leave his room, one of his friends mentioned that Chu Tong was starting a live stream. In the stream, she talks about everything that happened between her and the top spender on that platform. She told everyone how their relationship started a long time ago, but after everything they went through together, he didn't want her anymore. Ken Yuan is angry while his friend is curious if she really was with that rich guy. But our protagonist is already furious. She still wants to play the victim. But he thinks this plan doesn't suit her. There's definitely someone behind it. He then calls one of his friends and asks about who is sponsoring her live stream. Shortly after, he is informed it's Dreamland Shen Shui's company. Ken Yuan is outraged. The Dan girl provoked him and now thinks he won't do anything. At Dreamland, Shen Shui is impressed that her live stream was so successful on its first try. When she proposed this idea to her boss, she was reprimanded. But one of her employees found out about his childhood love, Lin Chu Tong, and that's where she saw the chance to win him over. She thinks she is a genius. Then she gets a call from her boss informing her that their company has been banned from the platform. He went to the group of billionaires and told everyone to be careful and remove any investments or involvement with that company. Since that group is only for the ultra-rich who trust each other, everyone just followed the information and made several calls to withdraw everything they had. This caused a storm in the place. And in the end, they were banned from everything and had to terminate operations. One of the guys came to inform her that since everyone withdrew their investments, it would need 10 million to keep the place running, but they didn't have that. She was trembling and furious, wondering who was messing with her. Seeing the initial downfall of the company, some investors came to talk to her and withdrew everything they had. Even the streamers working for her left since it wasn't worth staying in a banned company. Without any investors, the company also lost the lease they had. Leaving with boxes in hand and the place desolate, she didn't know what to do. She was sure that to have so much power, it could only be Mr. Wan, but why did he do that? Even Xu Tong was banned from the platforms. All obviously because of the bald contacts he had. And now was time to buy something for Kiki. When suddenly Shen Shui smacked her face against the glass, giving him a scare. With tears in her eyes, she said she was foolish and begged for forgiveness. And with that, the counterattack began with zero favorability. However, he thought he wasn't interested in an older woman even though she always came back from the market with two giant bags. He lowered the window and in full Giga Chad mode, told her it would be best if she didn't bother him anymore. Strangely, she collapsed to the ground, drooling and wondering why she hadn't realized he was so handsome, especially when he spoke so coldly to her. Her favorability increased and he sped up the Ferrari on the road. At Kiki's mansion, her friends were all impressed with the new house. Suddenly, one of them questioned. A girl with green hair asked if that place was really her house. As far as she had heard, the owner of the place was an old man. Kiki's friend told them to shut up, saying it was ridiculous to think she would be with an old man. However, the girl's boyfriend said it was true, and the owner of the house even had a 12-year-old daughter. Everyone started thinking that the house wasn't hers but just a favor from an old man. But her friends slapped the paper on the table, showing that she was the sole owner of the place. And people started believing that she had really bought it with her live stream earnings. Meanwhile, Kiki was feeling insecure, wondering why he hadn't arrived yet. He got out of the Ferrari with a teddy bear in hand. He parked his car far away to avoid drawing too much attention. Suddenly, he heard something coming from behind and a car almost ran over his foot. It stopped in front of everyone who wondered if it was a guy named Tang. The blonde guy named Tang Xuan got out of the car and ordered someone to park it for him. 
At that moment, he noticed Chen Yuan on the side. He wondered if Kiki had really invited this sewer rat to the party. Not to mention he brought a teddy bear, which was ridiculous. Suddenly, Kiki shouted that he had finally arrived. As the two turned, she said she had been waiting for a long time. Tang Xu in all gleaming said it was so good to see her happy like that, but she dodged him. She went straight to Chen Yuan who brought the teddy bear for her and thanked him. Everyone started commenting on how the fool was ignored, while he wondered why she was giving attention to this kid. Suddenly, a red truck passed behind him, and he thought the perfect chance had come. He told Kiki he brought a gift that he was sure she would like. While the guys were unloading some things from the truck, he thought that rat should have stayed in the sewer, and now will learn the difference between them. He gave her a Yamaha CF6 piano, and said he thought it was perfect for the star of the day. Did she like the gift he brought? She said she did, but the piano was very expensive, so she would transfer the money back. He said it was okay because the value was nothing to him. Besides, he had composed a piece just for her. The girls were all smitten and excited to see what he would show, and he started playing the keys, music here and there. The other girls kept saying the two were a perfect match with that piano talent. Kiki strangely complimented him, saying she couldn't compare to such talent, and he said she was flattering him too much. He then turned to Chen Yuan and asked why he didn't show a bit of his talent. Chen Yuan smiled, realizing the guy wanted to embarrass him, and said he would then show a bit of what he knew. Kiki wondered if Chen Yuan really knew how to play the piano, but obviously, he knew nothing. But with 35 enhancement points, any skill can be improved. The system notified that it would take 10 points to learn, and he used them immediately, while thinking he would make that guy look foolish, and asked the system for 50 years of piano experience. He started glowing at the piano, and Xuan noticed his vibe had changed. He started playing, and the guy was stunned. It was the same piece he had just played, but the kid had already memorized it. Ken Yuan was confident, saying the surprise was yet to come. He started accelerating the music even more, without missing a single note. The boy was on fire. People were sweating, wondering if it was normal, and if he had four hands by any chance. He had to be the new Beethoven in front of them. In their minds that have that talent, Chen Yuan must have undergone brutal training. He was like a machine gun firing at each note. When he finished, smoke even rose from the boy. At the party, everyone was silent. As the legendary loose cigarette, he pulled one from the pack. He placed it on the piano string, which was so hot it lit the cigarette. The Chinese numb no limits. He put his hand on Xuan's shoulder and told him, Your skills are good, just keep working hard. He then placed the cigarette in the guy's mouth and said that playing the piano was about expressing emotions, not creating competition. The guy seemed to fall in love, saying he understood. Everyone was impressed, and suddenly, Kiki made a mischievous face, saying she had chosen the right person. Sitting on the couch, she thought he was a treasure among men, and her favorability kept rising. It finally reached 95, and now the counterattack was successful, automatically evolving to a level 60 piano maestro, and Kiki was now becoming a loyal follower of the boy. Since he spent 78 million on her, he received 7 million in return. The guy was finally managing to take advantage of this system to get rich. With 25 more enhancement points, he didn't even know where to use them. Suddenly, someone came from behind, saying he was full of incredible surprises. It was Kiki, saying he made her very happy that night. He said that this performance was his second gift, so how would she thank him? A new girl appeared, Kim Bing Su, known as the Ice Beauty. She wasn't famous for her looks, but for her hostile attitude towards all men. Because of this, everyone speculated she was a lover of women. Besides, she was always close to the president, so they even thought they had a relationship. But the truth is that she was kidnapped in her childhood. Even though the police arrived in time and nothing happened, it created a trauma in her. And since then, she hates men. Kiki asked Chen Yuan who he thought was more beautiful between the two. He told Kiki that of all the women he had met, she was the most beautiful. While thinking he wants to avoid women like being Sui as much as possible because they're all crazy. At that moment, Kiki called her friend over to meet him. She apologized, saying she was stuck in traffic. Kiki quickly introduced Chen Yuan who asked if he was the guy who had played the piano, and he said yes. But she said she had heard he was the type of guy who had relationships with several girls. Really a man with no morals even if he had some talent. Chen Yuan wanted to strangle her. But Kiki told him to calm down, saying she had always been like that. But the system doesn't forgive, and another target was found. Kim Bing Su, 25 years old, 52 kilos and 9.3 in appearance, with minus 80 in favorability. And you would gain combat skills if he completed everything. Ken Yuan threw the system on the ground, saying that last time it was the aunt, and now it's another woman he doesn't want to bootlick. The night passed, and it was time for the birthday wishes. She celebrated, they cut the cake, and everyone was happy. Until Bing Su called Kiki for a little chat. Outside, she warned Kiki that it would be good for her to stay away from Chen Yuan, and Kiki asked why. Bing Su said that Chen Yuan was involved with many girls, and she didn't want to see her friend in a toxic relationship. Besides, she was about to graduate and wanted to pass the president's position to her. Kiki seemed to want that president's position. She remembered that when she arrived, she always competed with Bing Su, and they argued a lot. 
But now in the end, Bing Su wanted to pass the president's position to her. Were the rumors about Bing Sui true? Was she looking for some fun with a capital L? Embarrassed, Kiki responded that she really didn't deserve the position and it was better to find someone else. But Bing Sui approached and said that love really blinds people because Kiki wasn't acting like the person she knew. Kiki said she was even thinking about leaving the student council to spend more time with Chen Yuan. Bing Su got angry, saying she was losing all ambition and being stupid because of that guy. Her favorability kept dropping while he wondered if he couldn't even eat cake without losing points. The party was about to end, and everyone was leaving. Suddenly, she told Chen Yuan to wait a minute. There was something she wanted to tell him. He was about to leave thinking she was getting more adorable with more favorability. All she did was invite him to watch a movie tomorrow and he thought she was inviting him for some Netflix and chill. Suddenly, he heard someone crying in the background. It was Xu Yuan, leaning against his car, devastated and wondering why he had practiced piano his whole life. Ken Yuan felt awkward seeing the guy there and went to talk to him, surprising him. The guy was startled and asked what he wanted. Ken Yuan said he had just lost a piano duel, which wasn't a big deal. He felt awkward because he had humiliated the guy using the system. However, Xu Yuan interpreted it differently and thought he was being belittled. Ken Yuan said that wasn't the case, but Xu Yuan replied saying he admitted Chen Yuan's skills were good. However, it didn't matter because his family was extremely wealthy, and he had everything good. He pulled out his car key and said he was sure Chen Yuan was a poor guy who didn't even have a place to fall dead. But Chen Yuan was heading to the Ferrari. The poor guy even broke his car key. Lying on the ground, he wondered why the god wore simple clothes and drove a Ferrari. As he was leaving, wondering what movie to watch with Kiki tomorrow, he suddenly saw Bing Su standing in the middle of nowhere. She clearly looked cold and he imagined she might catch a cold. But he didn't care about that, letting the ice princess freeze and sped away. However, when he looked in the rearview mirror, she was surrounded by some guys. They asked if she was alone and if she needed a bodyguard by any chance. If she made them happy, they would even do it for free. She got angry and said if they touched her one more time, she would call the police. The guys laughed in her face and said the angrier she got, the more fun it was. However, they stopped laughing when she kicked one in the balls. She turned and ran, leaving the guy in agony. He told his friends to capture her, who was already fleeing. Looking back, she was confident she could outrun them, but there were too many of them. However, Suddenly, she ran into Chen Yuan, who asked if she was okay. She was curious to see him, but now the guys had already surrounded them both. The guy who had been kicked told his friends to capture her quickly. She thought that men were indeed bastards. And now she was trapped because she bumped into this damned Chen Yuan. But he warned the guys they had two minutes to get out of there. The guy with the mohawk asked what would happen if they didn't leave. Sometime later, everyone was lying beaten on the ground. Chen Yuan wiped his hands, saying he had given them advice. He turned to Bing Xiaoyi and asked if she was okay. But he lost 5 favorability points. The poor guy was in disbelief. He was now at minus 95 after saving her. She was glaring at him with fiery eyes. He had no idea how this happened. She asked him if he thought he was amazing for acting like that. Did he think such a trick would work on her? She was waiting for a car, some gangsters showed up and he saved her. Clearly, he had orchestrated everything. Not only did she underestimate his intelligence, but he also underestimated hers. She grabbed him by the collar and said that Kiki was willing to give up the president's position just to be with a guy who deceived everyone just to be with her. She turned and said that trash like him made her even angrier. Ken Yuan was in disbelief that she invented this whole story. What madness is this? He called after her, saying he would explain. But she said she didn't want any explanations and just hoped he wouldn't use such a trick again. Our boy was left there not knowing what to do, and the guys were getting up from the ground. He vented his anger on the guy who was waking up. With that, he left, cursing everyone. In disbelief that such a thing happened. Until his phone rang and he wondered who was calling. It was Ruyo. From her presidential bed, she wanted to know if he was free tomorrow. He wanted to know why and she said she was free and wanted to watch a movie with him. But now things got complicated for the guy because he had already planned a movie with the president. Before he could respond, she said it was the first time she had invited someone like this and just hoped he wouldn't reject her, please. So he devised a devious plan. He would have one in the morning and one at night. The next morning, his friend sent him a message wanting to talk to him. When he met his friend, he explained that he had bought tickets to watch with a girl, but got stood up and wanted Chen Yuan to accompany him. Unfortunately, it was a friend he couldn't refuse because when he was poor, this friend was always there. The plan was to watch with the friend at 2 in the afternoon, with Kiki at 5 and with Ruyo at 8. He knew this wouldn't be an easy day. Suddenly, he looked to the side and was startled by a crazy girl. There was a girl putting on makeup inside his car, out of nowhere. She apologized, saying she was distracted with her makeup and accidentally got in without noticing. He said that since she had regained her senses, she could get out. But she said that maybe she had entered by accident, but found the right person. In her mind, she wouldn't miss this chance. And she asked for his contact because she felt a connection. But with his phone in hand, he said he didn't have a phone. Clearly not wanting to give a chance to the stranger. She said it was fine then, she would get out of the car. As she was leaving, the guy outside recognized her and asked what she was doing there. Ken Yuan and the girl recognized him as Li Wenji. 
He has a friend of Chen Yuan who they were going to the cinema with, and he asked why she was getting out of the car. Did the two of them have something going on? Chen Yuan was worried his friend would get the wrong idea. He got out of the car and tried to explain to his friend. But his friend got angry at the girl and told her he was sure she saw his friend driving a luxury car and threw herself at him. Chen Yuan confirmed that was exactly what happened. They locked the car and left. She was in disbelief that Liu Wenji knew such rich people. While they were watching the movie, a friend asked him why he couldn't get any women. He was so unlucky. Chen Yuan told him not to worry too much about it, and two girls behind them said they were strange for watching a movie together like that. Chen Yuan then told his friend that he should never expose his needs. He explained that the more you chase after women, the worse they will treat you. A real man doesn't spend his money on women, but on himself to impress women. That's what he said. And his friend was impressed, saying he had heard a confession from the gods. He grabbed Chen Yuan's hand, and said he really understood how things work now. Chen Yuan told him to be careful. People might think the wrong things. And he explained that to attract more women, he just had to be a bit more handsome, a bit richer, and have a few more girlfriends. That's how it works. His friend was frustrated with these obviously impractical tips. As they left the cinema, his friend thanked him, and Chen Yuan said he had a favor to ask in about two hours. The girls behind them left convinced they were a couple. All part of Chen Yuan's plan to escape and go on a dangerous adventure. In front of the cinema, someone was waiting. It was Kiki, wanting to know where Chen Yuan was. Suddenly, a guy named Wu Banshi appeared, asking if she could give him her contact info. She apologized, saying she was on a date, but the guy insisted, saying her date wouldn't be interrupted by giving her number. Suddenly, someone tapped him on the shoulder. It was Chen Yuan, saying he would show how it's done. He put his hand beside her and asked if they could have a deep conversation somewhere with fewer people. The guy wondered if this kind of harassment would actually work. But she responded affirmatively, and the guy was fuming with disbelief. They were watching an action movie and Kiki kept glancing to the side. She asked if he wasn't interested in the movie since he was always on his phone. He tried to explain that it was some family business that had been troubling him a lot lately. She believed him, imagining that to have so much money, he must have many problems. His life was different. People only see his extraordinary skills but don't see the countless drops of sweat he sheds while practicing every day. He had been training tirelessly since childhood. He should be training for his future now, but here he was being monopolized by her. Okay. Suddenly, she placed her hand on his and he was startled. When he looked over, she was crying. He was embarrassed, wondering why she was so emotional. As they left the cinema walking down the street, she asked if he wanted to recommend something. But just as he was about to answer, he received a call. He had asked his friend to call right after the movie so he could escape. He answered and asked what it was. Changing his expression, he said it was something very serious, and he had to handle it now. His friend was confused, as was Kiki. He then told her his friend had some problems and he had to go help, and she said it was okay. It was fine for today. As he left, she thought he was a very decent man for giving up a woman to help his friends. In the car, the slight Chen Yuan was thinking he was a genius. Now he just had to win the last challenge. He arrived in front of her apartment and informed her he was downstairs. While thinking he would never do this kind of thing again, his life was worse than a battlefield. Someone called him and the girl appeared casually, asking if he had waited long. Our boy was smitten, saying she looked stunning. She really was a treasure among women and could look good in any style. She asked if he was ready to leave and he said, let's go. While thinking that if things went well, they could take it to the next level. They went to the cinema, then to a restaurant and the night passed, and they were back home. As he was leaving, she told him to rest well and said she enjoyed the night, but he asked her to wait. Could he come inside to get a glass of water? She seemed very happy to accept. The scene shifted to him taking a shower, while she wondered why she had done such a thing. She thought he just wanted a glass of water, but after he arrived, he said it was too late to leave, and she allowed him to stay. She couldn't believe she accepted that. What would she do if he asked for that? But it wouldn't be impossible. Then she saw something in his pocket. When she took it out, it was the tickets for all the movies he had watched today. Our guy was caught in 4K. He came out of the shower saying he was ready, but was startled when he saw the tickets on the table. She then wanted to know what that meant. Either he was a movie addict, or he was dating a lot of women. Why did he want to get involved in her life just to be with other women? Ken Yuan couldn't say anything while she was berating him, saying he just played with her emotions. Minus 20 favorability points as she told him to leave, now down to 75. He was trembling, thinking he had seen this coming. He then told her that he never thought she trusted him so little and a few movie tickets and everything he did for her went down the drain. Angrily, she said he still had the nerve to make excuses. He called Wanji and told her to talk to him and ask what they did today. Wanji answered, asking why he was calling so late. Royu took the phone and asked him if he went to watch a movie with Chen Yuan today. Wanji said yes, he had invited a girl, but she declined so they went together. But he snapped to reality with a name he heard and asked how this happened. She half ignored him and angrily hung up the phone saying it was all settled. Now she was confused not knowing if he was telling the truth or if his friend was lying to her. She had the number of the girl he said he was going to the cinema with so she decided to check. 
When the girl answered, she said yes, the guy had asked her to watch a movie, but she declined until a guy in a Ferrari showed up. Ken Yuen asked if she wanted to check his cards to see what he bought. He turned, saying he was very disappointed. She said there must have been a misunderstanding and asked for forgiveness, but he slammed the door. Outside, he thought he managed to get out of that situation. The guy doesn't lie much. She sent a message on her phone and he said it was okay, he understood and forgave her. She felt relieved, thinking he was very kind and her favorability rose by 21 points. Now he relaxed, her favorability went up again, luckily by one point more than before. He realized he needed to be more careful since he almost ruined everything. He needed to keep in mind that certain connections are just for gaining points and status, while others are for fun and joy. If he got the system for revenge, he would build a harem. Some girls passed by him, commenting that they were going to watch something. He seemed to recognize the name and decided to take a look as well. The court was packed with people. The girls were all excited, cheering and saying they loved them. On the side were Xu Tong and her friend who suddenly teleported next to Chen Yuan who greeted the famous Xu Liu. But someone touched his shoulder and when he turned, it was Zhang asking if he liked basketball. The guys seeing this were all envious, saying Chen Yuan was a lucky guy. Suddenly, Bing Sui appeared, saying that men love to talk behind women's backs. Kitty told her to relax since they were just going to watch the game. On the court, Xu Wen was worried, seeing Chen Yuan there again. And there were a lot of girls surrounding him, what kind of disaster is this? But he saw Kiki and believed this was his chance to shine. He had been practicing basketball for the past six months, it was time to humiliate this guy. He threw the ball in his direction. Ken Yuan sensed something coming and in Spider-Man style, managed to catch it. He turned to the guy and said it was shameful he acted that way just because he lost in the piano competition. Suman said it didn't matter if he wanted, he could come and compete in basketball. Our boy seemed to be losing his temper with the guy. He threw the ball back, saying he would play then. Suman decided to catch it, but the throw was too strong, and he was knocked back. Kiki was impressed by the powerful throw, while Bing Su commented that men are all savages who know nothing but fighting. The poor guy was lying on the ground with his friends asking if he was okay. He couldn't believe that Chen Yuan was that strong. Ken Yuan said he wasn't interested in a one-on-one, -on -one. why not have a five-on-five -five to see the school's level? Everyone was shocked and couldn't believe he had called for a five-five. Xu Wen knew he had the school team, the coach on his side, and the crowd. This was more like a one-on-nine and he was sure he would win. The game started and he received the ball. He was confident he would humiliate Chen Yuan and finally make Kiki recognize who was better. Ken Yuan was surrounded not only by enemies but by his teammates as well. But he knew very well that this would happen. Who needs a team when you have this system? With that, he added 30 more years of basketball experience. Xuman continued to be confident, thinking it was time to show his skill. He jumped to dump the ball. But suddenly, Chen Yuan appeared and blocked it easily. Everyone froze in disbelief that the poor guy was defeated so easily. It was one play, and the guy was already psychologically shaken. And Chen Yuan said it was his turn now. But the referee blew the whistle, saying it was a foul. With that, Xuman took a free throw and scored a point, thinking Chen Yuan was an idiot since everyone was on his side. There was no way he could win. But the school crowd was starting to notice something was wrong. It was shameful to call the referee for something like this. And Chen Yuan was getting angry. Now he was motivated to end this guy. The game resumed and he stole the ball. He went and scored a basket. The poor guys hadn't even moved from their spots. Xuan scolded his team for not being able to block one guy. He even cursed Chen Yuan's team for not stopping him. Once again, they tried to surround him. But he jumped and scored another. The referee and the players didn't understand why he was trying so hard. Clearly, the game was rigged for him to lose. So why didn't he just give up? The referee started to remember what he taught his students about respect, and how, when entering the court, you should always give your all. Seeing Chen Yuan trying so hard left everyone in the basketball community emotional. Chen Yuan advanced once more, not understanding why everyone was standing still. People couldn't figure out what was happening. On the court, it seemed like no one else was moving. From afar, Kiki said he was winning the game and maintaining his virtues. Xuan couldn't understand why no one was following his plans anymore. The score was now 60 to 2. Xuan was exhausted, and Chen Yuan was advancing once again to humiliate him. At that moment, he thought that if he at least defended this one, he wouldn't be so embarrassed. Chen Yuan approached. He jumped, and Xuan threw his elbow into his chest. But it was his arm that got broken. He fell to the ground, writhing in pain. And Chen Yuan slammed the dunk. With that, he gained points with Kiki. He gained points with Xu Tong. He gained points with Xu Lil. He gained points with Xiaoying. As he was leaving, he said Xuan didn't deserve to be the team captain. It really insulted his skills to have to compete with someone so dirty. Xuan told him to stop being arrogant, saying he would soon regret it. Some girls said they even forgot to record because he was so incredible. Seeing that, Jian wanted to know where Chen Yuan was. She wanted to give him a bottle of water, but Kikit also wanted to give him a bottle of water. However, all four were holding water bottles with liquid spilling. Chen Yuan fled, sweating nervously. Choosing which bottle to drink the nectar from could make him lose all the others. He took a shower after the game and received a friend request from someone in the group of rich people. The guy called him, and he asked what was up. The guy said it was nothing much. He just wanted to know if the boy wanted a wife. 
Ken Yuan was skeptical about this offer. The next target was named Go Xinyuan, a 22-year-old actress. Her career was going very well, but she got involved in an online scandal and the company ended her contract. The guy who called him in the group was Ga Lang, her brother, who was asking for Chen Yuan's help. Ken Yuan asked if he was hearing correctly, did Ga Lang want him to marry his sister? Ga Lang clarified that it wasn't exactly like that. He said it somewhat casually. It's just that his sister was falsely accused and now her contract was terminated. So he wanted to know if Chen Yuan would like to buy the house she lives in. Ken Yuan thought he really needed to buy a house for himself. But considering she's an actress, she must love spending money, which would make her a perfect target for the system. He then told Gao Lang to arrange for him to meet his sister and see the house. Gao Lang said he would arrange everything now, thinking the group never lies. Mr. Yan is truly incredible. It seems the rumor that he saved the Xiao family isn't a lie. At the house, Go Zuanian was furious. Obviously, and now that her career was going downhill, a bunch of guys were offering to marry her. But she didn't want any of that trash. None of them deserved a beauty like hers. All she wanted was to be a simple actress. Why did everything have to be so difficult? She then received a call. It was her brother telling her not to worry about money anymore. He found the perfect person. She was a bit confused about who it was, and her brother explained that it was a very influential guy who recently appeared. Hearing the name Mr. Yan, she already imagined a rundown fat guy. With that, she berated her brother, saying that when he got home, he would get beaten. Her brother tried to explain that he was an incredible guy and to show him the house as he was arriving soon. She hung up, angry, saying all men were the same, a real disaster. With her hands to the sky, she swore that even if she had to jump off a building, she wouldn't accept a scent from this man. In front of the house, Chen Yuan was impressed with the structure, and it wasn't very far. He rang the doorbell, and she thought the old man had come running like a desperate fool. She walked slowly down the hallway just to annoy him. She opened the door, saying she came running and for him to stop being annoying, but she blushed. As soon as she saw Chen Yuan introducing himself, before she could ask who he was, he entered, apologizing. She was impressed that the boss was so young and handsome. He sat on the sofa and told her she could sit too. She was a bit confused, as it was her house. She asked if he didn't want to see more of the house, and he said he had seen enough to know it was a good house. After all, that's not why he was there, and she wanted to know why then. He said the most important thing was her, and he wanted her to be his mistress. Wow, the boy is bold, activating the system wildly. Go Xuanian 9.2 in appearance and minus 35 in favorability. Ken Yuan thought that this time he wouldn't waste time, he would go on the offensive. But hearing this, she wasn't pleased. The guy came in, asked her to be his mistress. She would have to humiliate him. She said he was very direct, but it wasn't impossible if he accepted some conditions. First, the car worth 10 million. An amazing apartment, and he had to invest 2 billion in two films, where she would be a lead actress. Before she finished, he said that was very little, it seemed simpler than he thought. She was in disbelief. Obviously, the boy would like it. He was eager to spend all the system's money. Returning home, Gao Lang was shocked. Chen Yuan's car was still there. Why hadn't he left? He entered the room and asked his sister why the loose cigarette car was still there. Despondent, she said she actually got it as a gift from him. Besides that, he deposited a lot of money into her account. The brother then asked if everything went well with the house sale and if she at least got the two million. Showing her phone, she said she got one billion. The boy's eyes sparkled, imagining that Chen Yuan really liked his sister. Finally, he could retire and become an uncle who only smokes cigarettes. Gao Zhuanian couldn't forget about Chen Yuan. He handed over the money, said he transferred the car to her name and left, saying he had other things to do. He only came to help her because he didn't like seeing beautiful women suffer. Wow, what a hero. With that, she couldn't forget the boy. She thought he wasn't so bad after all, and her favorability kept rising. At Bing Su's graduation, she warned Kiki to be careful with Chen Yuan. Kiki tried to explain that Chen Yuan wasn't what she thought, but Bing Su was clearly determined to hate the guy. She then revealed to her that on her birthday, he orchestrated some gangsters just to try and win her over. Kiki said it seemed like she had a very troubled mind. Ken Yuan is a hero that everyone at school likes, showing a photo of Shu Lil and her dad holding a poster. Not to mention that on her birthday, he had no idea she was going there, so it was impossible that he had set everything up. Bing Su started to question if she had really misunderstood things. Was she exaggerating with her paranoia? With that, she left without saying anything to Kiki. Now Bing Su felt embarrassed, thinking she had been mistaken in her romantic delusion. Back at work, she was exhausted. She was dying of shame because she had told her friend that her boyfriend was hitting on her when in fact he wasn't. Not to mention that every time she remembered the incident, the only thing that came to mind was Chen Yuan protecting her. Suddenly, her boss called her for a meeting, waking her up to reality, and informed her that there would be a charity dinner with the city's top businessman. The boss wanted her to go and become friends with a certain Yang, a type of millionaire who had recently appeared. Bing Su felt sad. She had joined a company with a female boss to avoid this kind of thing, but she accepted. It was that or lose her job. Back at home, Chen Yuan was talking with the guys from the millionaire group. After he gave infinite money to Gao Xuanian, she had been able to defend herself against the false accusations, and Chen Yuan was impressed with how well she handled things. On the other end of the phone was Hao Chang Qi, 
inviting him to the charity dinner, thinking that it would only be rich people he knew he could find a way or someone to spend a lot of money on. So of course he would go. Back at Gugs Vanian's mansion, she was doing her best to defend herself from the accusations, but it wasn't easy. Every time she needed more money to invest in marketing, she received a transfer from our boy. She tried to convince herself that it was nothing, he wasn't winning her over like that. But favorability doesn't lie. The day of the charity dinner arrived. Of course, all the millionaires that our boy had humiliated were present, from the bar guy to the basketball guy. Suman said he was going to the bathroom. He knew the new magnate of the group would be at that party, and he had researched a lot to get close to this person. He knew it would be someone elegant and sophisticated, an elder with advanced vision. So he stood at the door, wanting to be the first to meet this person. But suddenly, he saw Chen Yuan arriving and wondered why he was there dressed as security. The poor guy had actually spent 20000 on that suit, really only used to spending the system's money. But he was startled. The security guards were indeed wearing the same suit as him. Xuan went to speak to him, calling him the Prince of Basketball, and asked if he was so broke that he came there to work as security. But Chen Yuan said that wasn't the case, and that he was invited to the banquet. Xuan responded that they could enter together then, thinking he was lying and wouldn't have his name on the list. At the entrance, the security asked him to show the invitation, and Chen Yuan was confused. He hadn't received any invitation. Xuan circled him, laughing, saying he was ridiculous. He really came there pretending like that. Meanwhile, another car pulled up to the event. It was being Su arriving for work. All the guys blushed upon seeing her. She thought she didn't like arriving in a luxurious car, but unfortunately, it was part of the company's plan. She heard some commotion on the side and looked to see Chen Yuan and the security guard. He was already getting angry, saying he didn't have an invitation, but he was sure he was invited. A security guard said everyone who was invited received something at home. Bing Su laughed in his face, asking if he really thought he was that important. Suddenly, she appeared and said that each card allowed bringing a guest, so he was hers. The guard accepted without a word while Chen Yuan was confused as to why she was helping him since she hated him. She turned and told him to hurry up, saying her perception of him hadn't changed. She just owed him a favor. She understood that on that night, he really did save her. And that's all. But Chen Yuan didn't like this, he was about to make a call to humiliate Xuan, and now she had ruined everything. He then told her that she shouldn't consider this repaying the favor, he didn't ask to be her lackey. It would be better if she stopped meddling in other people's business and just left a like on the video to help Mamoru make more juicy content for his viewers. Part 3 is on the way so activate the cheeky little bell and I'm out.